the following footage is mostly archival. Uh, mostly comes down to uh, working on some stuff and finding old files and wanting to bring it out. So, uh, as it stands, uh, some of this footage may not reflect exactly what I think or believe, and this project didn't turn out the way I wanted it, um, or anything. Uh, thoughts and opinions probably have changed graciously. I felt like I held back, so here is the Broforce project. So, um, I guess I would say enjoy, but uh, I didn't really much enjoy it while I was doing it. So, all right, goodbye. Why, hello and welcome to uh, the big dumb, big dumb action movie thing project with the Broforce thing. I, I, I'm Noah. And this is Thundercock. Uh, <clears throat> we're just gonna fucking, we, we thought, we're like, you know, what if we actually watched uh, all the source material for the Broforce fucking characters? So all those big dumb action movies that inspired them to fucking make that amazing fucking game. I don't know. Thought it was a good idea. We had a list already written down, and we omitted some that were. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna watch all the movies, like all of them, because there's like what seven time cop movies, and then oh god, there's seven Universal Soldier movies, Universal ones. Yeah, yeah. and then there's we'd have to watch all of A Team, all of A Team, all of MacGyver, and all, all of Walker Texas, Texas Rangers. Rangers. Not gonna fucking happen. Not not fucking doing that. No. So what we're gonna do. For those, oh, and not all of 007. And, yeah, not all of 007. That's a lot of movies. <laughs> what we're going to do is, for Walker, Texas Ranger, and MacGyver, we're going to watch... Uh, three... Three... Best? Co community... They can't see your air quotes, dick. Yeah, fuck on. The three <laughs> best uh, movies voted by a community. And so that's what we're going to watch there. Slash may disagree. I don't know. I think it's the best. Just the best way to deal with it. I think it's the best way to deal with it, because fuck that. Just, just Jesus Christ. Then with the 007 movies... Um, we're watching... It's one of our... One of our favorites, so uh, Noah's is The World Is Not Enough. He My favorite is... Dr. No. Dr. No. And then we chose one of the voted best. Which is Skyfall. Yeah. So, I mean, there's obviously some discrepancies, some movies we won't watch. Yeah. Like, um, what were we skipping? We're skipping one out of an entire series. Mad Max, fuck two. Yeah. Fuck two. dumb. Fuck two. I hate two. Yeah, two was just kind of like I don't know two. Mm. Like, yeah, we're we're family oriented. <laughs> don't mind rape. the rape though. <laughs> don't mind the rape. It's Here's fine. the wacky side character. Go fuck yourself. Um. Yeah. Uh, so recently we watched. Uh, the world is not enough. Yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> the first one, because Raiden is in Broforce, so we decided to watch those movies. Judge Dredd, the one with Stallone, and the newest one, Dredd. Yeah. Holy shit. We, we had a lot of garbage to sift through for this entire yeah. thing. I was like, oh, there's, there's one good movie, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 I have to say, though, I enjoyed, for the most part, uh... World is Not Enough? The World is Not Enough. There was a little... There was some stuff that I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like oh the ma the main the base of the main villain's like I can't feel pain and I'm going to die because I've of it. I'm like become so no. It's like oh okay. And then the other girl's like I don't feel pain. Oh yeah, spoiler. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> fuck you, spoilers. It's so weird. Like I don't get it. Like maybe we're dumb. That's super possible. I mean, like, holy shit! Do you know how low this fucking is rated on Rotten yeah, Tomatoes? Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty bad. It's like abysmal. It's like fifty-seven percent. Like, oh, that, that's pretty bad for a James. Well, it's not as bad as the, what what James Bond movies are. Those the action these super ones. Uh, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton. That's right. Oh god! Like nobody likes any of those. Yeah. What was? That? There's one Bond that only had one film. I don't remember that one. I, it, is it? It's not Roger Moore. It's one. Because Sean Connery died off, essentially they didn't want him anymore, mm -hmm. and then they did another one, and then Ron, Sean Connery came back again. Yeah, yeah. So what was your what was your favorite part in the world is not enough? I don't know. I want to see if you can accurately depict that story. <laughs> I, it's like oh, bet. <laughs> so they take a bomb, like 
Do you want to talk about the favorite best part first before you can summarize it? No, I'll, I'll try to <laughs> summarize it, I guess. But Bond has to sneak into an area because he's a spy, duh. But <laughs> you sure you're thinking already a, the same movie? Yeah, there's a pipeline, and like you don't fuck it. You, you want to talk about your favorite part? and I can summarize it. Or sure. Can... Well, my favorite part is where I, I can't remember the character's name because I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the fat guy with the cane. Oh, dude, he's fucking great. But I love that when he walks in near the end of the movie. Fat guy McCain? Yeah, f- fat guy McCain. <laughs> walks up, and the guy who betrayed him, spoiler alert, is like, oh, I'm glad I found you. And he's like, me too. And he just fucking unloads on him. I was like, it was just so funny to me. Yeah. I think it was just a weird, quirky, like, goon. He's like, oh. It's like, that guy has more character. Why is he not, like, yeah. prominently chosen? It's fucking weird. No, like... Oh my god, I think one of my favorite fucking parts of that entire fucking movie is, I don't know, I find so much joy in the fucking, like, the scene where they're, the, the fucking pipeline, where they're in the pipeline. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Trying to defuse the bomb. Yeah, because it's just like, literally they just put him in a green screen room and animated motion lines yeah. and it was like, ah! <laughs> yeah. So like, alright, so the story... I, let me see if I can summarize this. Is uh, so fucking uh, man, King Oil Tycoon man, uh, is like, oh dude, I I know what my favorite part is. It's not the pipeline. I'll do that in just a bit. Okay. But King Oil Tycoon man has a daughter, and then uh, King Oil Tycoon man gets uh, blown up at MI6 because money. Uh, and then his daughter, who was previously kidnapped and raped, and they were like, yo, 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 fuck you, give us a ransom. And then she fought her way out. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. And she's, like, really apathetic. She's a bitch. Yeah. And that's the entire movie. Like, that's the entire movie, because, like, she's just like, oh, I need to protect you. Ah, uh, I'm going to accompany you. And, and then he... she's like, I can I can easily manipulate men like you. And that's the entire, like, kind of concept after that. Like, they, the the, the bad, bad dude that used to be her captor steals a nuke. No, no, no. He steals half the plutonium in the oh yeah, uh, yeah. decommissioned nuclear device. Yeah. And they're like, yep, yep, yep. They're, we're going to take this. And the, the big, bad, apathetic Linkin Park man... Uh, can't feel anything because there's a bullet that he was shot with like seven or ten years ago and it's still traveling through his brain so it's slowly cutting off all his senses i'm like that's that's not how that works actually i'm, I'm not a science doctor so. I, I don't know physics so i, I mean whatever uh, no like it's so dumb because like they're like oh okay uh so apathy man Teams up with Apathy Girl, who he kidnapped, and then they're like, yeah, we're going to blow up the other pipeline so there's no competition. So that all the oil comes through this one pipeline. So she gets rich. Which is weird, because how they plan to do it, they like bring that plutonium inside of a nuclear sub, and they're going to put the... They're going to put the uh, plutonium inside the core... Of the submarine and, and then crash it, crash it into like the, the coast, the coast of some area, yeah, like Spain or some shit, and it's gonna blow it all up. And it's like so no no oil can pass through that area. It's all contaminated and shit and whatever. So all the oil has to go through there. Yeah, we're horrifically butchering the plot, but eh, fucking. It. It's a really dumb fucking plot. I I think it's dumb because it's so poorly executed. They have like, uh, the the science girl. Yeah. Ah, uh, so there's science woman that they find at the nuke site, and she joins James Bond because of science plot reasons. Science. She's uh, got the big. And this, uh, if you don't know, the the Bond girl in this one is Christmas Jones. I don't. What's the actor's name? I have no idea. It's like Tia Carrera. It's not Tia Carrera. I don't know, dude. But like, no, it's just it's like oh weird, and then like. Literally during one subplot is like while he's following her. There's there's. Fatty McCain man. I love him. Who's like, I think he's played by a comedian, but like, he's, he's literally, his point is that he's fat and rich. Yeah, and he like, gets Bond stuff and whatnot. Yeah. And he's just like, oh, I'm a contact. I like eating fat. 
things and I own caviar. Yeah, he owns his own caviar. Oh, dude, the fucking helicopter with the saw blades. <laughs> the best. Oh, my. No, no, wait, wait, wait. The best part about that was not the helicopter with the saw blades. You gotta talk about the fucking parachuting snowmobile. Yeah, man, there's like a giant... There's like these, <laughs> Almost like a mix between a snowmobile and one of those giant fan boats. The wind boats. Yeah, the wind boats. Just like falling from the sky during this one scene. Chasing after them. And then action happens. James Bond takes care of a bunch of them. There's like two left. They're chasing after them. Uh, it flies off a cliff. They're like, oh, okay, that's that's good. You know, it's going to die. No par- parachute deploy. It's like, oh, shit. So James Bond grabs a gun. Shoots a hole in one of the dudes in the, in the dude's parachute, and it slowly crashes into no, no, the no. other snow, the plane yeah. snowmobile that's floating to the ground. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> it's like, oh no, another snowmobile. Man, I wish I could just you know Isn't go the to the left where he a little skis bit. Skis off the cliff yeah, and he rips oh, it. Oh yeah, he doesn't shoot it. He skis off the cliff and, and rips, and rips it, with it with the the ski the pole. ski sticks. Yeah, stupid. And then, like, it's so stupid because there's, like, two coming at him, and because he tore it, it, like, can't, it, like, turns right immediately, which I don't think that's how parachute works. But, yeah, I don't know. But, like, he, like, they slowly bump into each other at probably 15 miles an hour Not each. Even. And <laughs> they just, just blow up. Explosion. Just <laughs> fireball. This is also a movie that Q actually quit. Yep. And then John Cleese is in here is like, there you go. There's your there's your comedic relief fucking gadget explainer for the next few Pierce Brosnan movies. Yep. Because I know that he's not present in any Daniel Craig ones. Yeah. He's like, whatever, no, fuck that. <laughs> so weird. I don't get it. Like, the gadget that he used to escape the explosion... Was the jacket, like, sphere of styrofoam air stuff. Yeah. It was the dumbest shit. Like, that is the least useful gadget. But he's like, no, it's completely plausible. What? We don't actually have a reason for this gadget. Yeah, but here you go, bud. (laughs) The speedboat scene. Speedboat scene was pretty awesome. How about when he went underwater? That was so weird. Because boats submerge? Yeah, well, I mean, it was the special boat that he got from Q, but... It's it's a boat marine, and it, like... <laughs> the best part is it's rocket power, and he launches it through the city streets, and he's just driving it through. <laughs> also, for some reason, maybe I'm just dumb, but the, the water was so green. I think, like, the thing is, that's actually a thing, is, like, you, there's actually a division line in the Baltic Sea, between the, I think, the Adriatic Sea... Where you could actually see the difference in density. Hmm, okay, that makes so sense. So water, water isn't completely clean all around. No, absolutely. But it, it felt it just looked so green to me. Where it's like <laughs> this looks so weird. It was probably just the the British Isle being that polluted. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's green water, but Jesus, oh, it's it's just so fucking dumb. I think the the worst part, like the, the submarine keeps crashing into the ground. Like, James Bond really fucked up. He's like, uh, I'm gonna push all these levers down so it goes up. Yep. And I'm like, that clearly says push go up. Like, it's literally yeah. a thought process. It's like, uh, is it inverted, like, flight controls? Are you dumb, 007? You're supposed to be, like, MI6, you know, intelligence? Yeah. Oh, my God, it's so oh, dumb. Also, James, you dislocated your, your collarbone. Okay. But I'm gonna fuck the doctor, and she's gonna make it. Up. She's gonna say, "No, you're cleared for duty." It's like you, you can't do mission. It's like your your collarbone's dislocated. It's like you know that's really bad, right? No, 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 it's fine. Okay, just fuck the doctor. That's fine. Sure. Now you're good. Excuse for me, doctor. Yeah. Is there any other way I can get a clearance? Yeah. No, your your collarbone's fucked up. How about if I fuck you? I guess your collarbone's okay. Then. Yeah, I guess it's, that, that, that's fine. <laughs> I love that, like, Penny is the only one who's not, like, absent-minded about it. He's like, he probably fucked her. Yeah. I don't, I don't fucking know about this. It's so weird. <laughs> I think that's all we gotta say about, uh... What about the, 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 what about the cane shot on the fucking torture device? I found this relic torture device. Just like, that's dumb. Also, I don't know, how does that device work? Because it's, like, five turns and it, like, 
decapitates him or something? Or crushes no, it his... snaps the neck, the vertebrae. Okay. So it, it would sever the rest of the spine. Yeah, that's that's cool and all, but like, how was he able to still breathe? Because you, you think like how would tight it still push up against eh, whatever, I guess. It, it's not that it's going to choke him. Mm-hmm. It's that it's going to snap his neck. Yeah. Like, it doesn't push on the ring. It pushes right below. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's yeah. still like dumb. It's so stupid because, like, how... The, fat how, Man comes how, in. How they get the boat is Fat Mac McCain Man... Has um, a brother. Has a brother that is in the Navy or some <laughs> shit that, that's in it with a submarine. And he gets him... He convinces him to go to this one area. Well, he walks in and James is in this torture device and he sees the captain's hat. He's like... Bring that to me right now. And she's like, okay. She brings it to him, but then shoots him. She, she's shoot. like holding it really awkwardly. Yeah, like, 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 oh, if you were in that real situation, you, you have a gun behind that, don't you? Like, it'd be so obvious. But it's a movie, so whatever. But she shoots him. He's laying on the ground and pulls out his and cane. Fat. Yeah, and fat. He's still fat. That never changed. <laughs> and he has a cane. He has a cane that's a, still a gun. And he, like, points it at her. And then slowly starts pointing at James. Shoots James's uh, restraints. And then she's just like, man, he really must have hated you. Like, bitch, he shot the restraints. Like, how did you not see that? And then, of, of course, he gets out. Because, it like, one bullet shot, dec- like, makes this restraint go one side down. And, like, it's like a gate closing kind of restraint. Yeah. Like, I, it's a hard way to explain it is it's just, like, two semicircles coming together and then they, like, latch down, like, uh, I don't know what kind of, like, latch that is, where it's, like, a rectangle, and it goes over another rectangle, and you push back again. Like, you're essentially just hooking yeah. a, a rectangle piece. And it just shoots it, and it, it doesn't that it, it doesn't that it loosens it, or takes it off. Yeah, it just... It, like, jars it, so it goes slightly downward. Yeah. So like... it's like, oh, it's not actually hooked on. Mm-hmm. Like, this is dumb. Yeah. Like, overall, the movie was still fine, but it was just so weird. Is it... Oh, and the dock scene was dumb. The dock scene? The dock's warehouse, where he's just like, oh, yeah, well, that's where we're going to bring in the, the helicopters of the chainsaws. Yeah, man. Like, they had the helicopters of the chainsaws to deforest the area. And I'm like, okay. That's weird. And then they're like... They show up at the docks where Fat Man McCain is like, "Well, somebody talked about something here." And yeah, it's it's that's the docks is where he has his own caviar caviar fishery fishery or whatever the hell you would call it. Yeah, and then like they're like, "Yep, bring in the helicopters, the sh- the, the long chainsaw." It's like okay, it's one, it's like seven, isn't it? One, two, three, middle, one, two, three. Yeah, chainsaws, and they're like in a Ford direction arrow yeah it's on a so stick weird. going like 20 feet down from the helicopter like how do you land yeah it's the stupidest thing when i'm just like oh okay the bond car wasn't really necessarily pretty good it was nice but it was dumb then like these chains like because it's not really a chainsaw they're just like blades spinning these things are crazy because like it just cuts a car just in half cleanly the thing that really bothers me about that is if you look at it there's an obvious metal bar in between the blade saws because there's one on each side mm-hmm. and it goes straight through it. There's still, it still has to hit that metal bar. Yeah. You don't cut with the metal bar. No, you shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Science. But like everything they go through, like, yep, it saws right through it. Fuck it. Yep. I'm just like, this is the dumbest, but also the stupidest thing you could do. Dumbest and the stupidest? Yeah. What other gadgets did he have? I don't... I don't remember. I think that was um, it. Right? Yeah, I can't really think of one. Because he ruined the boat, and that was just an action scene. Yeah. And, and then he, like, straightened his tie underwater. Cause, yeah. Because cause silly bod moment. And then he had the inflatable jacket. Yeah. Which is stupid. Yeah. What else did he have? Yeah, I can't think of one. He, he really didn't have that much. That's dumb. Yeah. It's real dumb. Because you want gadgets. Okay, so... Uh, I think that's all we got to say about... Uh, what do we got for characters? So there's like... I can't feel girl is the villain. I can't feel man. Still dumb. Um, Big titty doctor. 
uh, Big Titty Doctor, Christmas Jones, uh, fucking dumbest. Uh, a Q R, uh, what's her name? A head of intelligence. The, 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 the I have no idea. Old lady. I, I, I know who you're talking about. I just don't know. Oh yeah, that was also a big plot point because like oh Mon yeah, she could, gets kidnapped and whatnot. She couldn't be, she couldn't say anything bad about the person that she was that Bond was trying to protect because she actually knows the person. Yeah, and it's like oh how dare you, 007. That's dumb. Why why oh she's the bad guy like he said oh no yeah he he predicts it like thirty minutes into the movie and they have to go through like another hour and a half where he goes see what I fucking told you yeah it was. It was, I don't think it was quite half an hour in, but it was, it was pretty early in the movie where it was just like, he's like, I don't know, I'm investigating her because of, you know, it feels weird and it's like, no, it's fine. And then it obviously turns out she, it's not fine. Also, I didn't find her very attractive. Who? Uh, Apathy Girl. Oh, Apathy Girl? I mean, she was cute, but yeah. Mm. She's kind of a bitch. Like, everything about that and her apathy, her apathy, her acting like a bitch all made her, like, completely unattractive. Yeah. I, think that, I still think that's the point. I, I don't know. Oh, I get that. That's the point. But also, Stockholm Syndrome is is a great... Fuck this. Stockholm Syndrome's pretty sweet, man. Is it M? I think it's M. Yeah, M. Yeah. M. Yep, also dumb. Uh, okay. Uh, where did you... Since it's our first movie, I guess we'll just throw it up on the fucking leaderboard for being really good... Yeah, I mean, unless you want to rank it's, it at the end. It's the top, I guess, right now. <laughs> this is the top so far, man. But then again, yeah, I think it, let's truly save our ranking for the end of the episode and okay. after we describe the rest of the movies. All right, cool. Uh, next one, Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah, the next <laughs> one we watched was Mortal Kombat, the first one, because there's Mortal Kombat 1 and Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> Which, I gotta say, the movie's not great. It it really isn't, but I like it. it. I mean, it's part of my childhood. But is so. it is it is it good like an action movie though? Yeah, it's it's fine as an action film. Also, as, Kane. I mean, if you were to really if, Kano, if you really want to compare it to the video games, which I'm pretty sure he will know a lot more than I will, because more or less, what did I play? Like Mortal Kombat one, two, I think briefly played three, and then like, of course, these weren't religiously. These were like, eh. yeah, and then I played Armageddon. But it was the movie was so weird too, like the beginning opening. Like when Liu Kang goes back to the Shaolin place, and Raiden shows up for the first time, and he's like, "Nah, man, that's just a a vagrant. It's not." And he gets he like he charges Raiden, and Raiden just like knocks him on his ass. He's like, "Oh, he really must be the Thunder God." It's like, but he that wasn't that impressive. He just fucked up he just like you're just bad at martial arts idiot <laughs> yeah, fuck you like, it was not even a judo he just like tossed him it was super weird it was a judo toss i'm yeah. pretty sure it was a judo toss it, it's so weird everyone in the temple immediately was like that's riding like are you sure like you've been worshiping a god how are you so sure that he would just appear before you yeah oh and how they get everyone on the boat was interesting like Johnny Johnny Cage was fine. I was okay with how they got him on the boat. That was fine. Yeah, just old man, hey, good old friend. Yeah. Come to this area to prove that you're a real martial artist. Hey, do you want to crack down the story of the movie for a little second? The what? <laughs> you want to crack down the story of the movie for a second? Because I'm sure nobody knows the story of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, like, there, was, there wasn't a story. It was just like, it's... It's fight. It's, it's, a, it's a kung fu movie, basically. Shang Tsung is like, yo, Mortal Kombat for... For protecting Earthrealm. We. Movie. The plot done. Yeah. Um, so nice. Also, there's a really weird scene. On, so after they get everyone on the boat. Oh, really weird scene. Are we talking? Yeah, when everyone's on the boat, like. Oh, sorry. How they get uh, Sonya on the ship is like. She sees Kano, which she's been tracking for a really long time. And she sees him get on the boat, and so she's like, oh, I gotta go get him. But Jax is like, "What? don't get on the boat. And then she does it anyway. I was like, that's... Why don't you listen to the partner that you've had for many years? No. Only listen to me. But whatever. I am the law. Get, <laughs> he gets on the... She gets on the boat, whatever. Are starts they... finding Kano. Shang Tsung mm -hmm. says, he's like, hey, I'm, how's it, how's it going? And then Sub-Zero shows up. Like, he has a... She has a gun uh, pointed at Shang Tsung. 
And uh, then Sub Zero just like shows up, grabs the grabs gun the and gun, like freezes the tip, and then breaks it off. I was like, that's that's weird. He didn't break the gun; he just froze it. He, and yeah, he froze the tip of the gun, then broke it off. Did he? Yeah, okay, absolutely. I don't remember, it's so I weird. Like, like everything about this fucking movie is weird. So, everyone's on the boat: Johnny, Sonia, Liu Kang, Raiden. So they're above deck on this weird, super CG ghost ghost ship. Luke hangs. Oh. Um, and Raiden's <laughs> Raiden's explaining the tournament. He's like, "You are my champions," and like, <laughs> Sonya's like, "Why? Do, why should I care about all this?" She's like, "Well, you were chosen." And Raiden goes, "Thousands of or billions, billions of souls are riding on you." Then he goes, Haha, "Sorry, <laughs> billions. Like, of, what? No, it's the the fate of billions are now in your hands." <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Like, just Christopher what? Lambert like, was just like, yep, I'm gonna be the Highlander and also be a dick riding. Yeah, like, <laughs> what the fuck? He isn't still riding the second movie, right? He's. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure, like, no one returned. Yeah, I don't know. I think the weirdest... We haven't th- watched that one yet, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've probably seen it before. Just... Oh, yes, I've seen it before. It's just not fresh from my memory. What the fuck was it? It was just like... Why... Why... Why is Sonya played by, what was it, we looked it up, she was like Miss USA once. Yeah. And then she was also the teacher in Billy Madison. Yep. Just like, why? Also like, Scorpion? Scorpion was so weird in that movie, because it's like, alright Scorpion, how do you work in the video game, and like in the lore and stuff, like, oh, I have a, sp- what he does is get over here, move, it's a spear. Like, he throws a spear that's attached to a rope. Okay, cool, yeah. whatever. In this fucking movie, he like, it's a creature inside of his palm that shoots out and, like, tracks down it because, like, he's fighting Johnny Cage. Because demonic force. powers. Yeah, you know, cause fuck it. It's not even good demonic power. Anyway, yeah, it's like this weird snake thing that comes out of his palm. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? I love how, like, it's just assumed that he's demonic and then, like, he takes him to, takes Johnny Cage to hell. Yeah, to the Shadow Realm, bro. I... <laughs> They're dueling. Come on. No, it's just like. You're just supposed to take that seriously. I mean, if you're just like an out of place moviegoer who would know nothing, you're just like, okay, so you can summon a spear from his head. Where are they? Yeah. Um. Also, I think my biggest issue with the movie though is Kano. Kano we, is one of my favorite characters in the video games. Because he's this brutal. This he's fuck a brutal. Bastard. He's a monster. He's a vicious killer. He runs the Black Dragon Clan. You know, I'm king of the underground myself. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like, in this movie, he's such a bitch. Like, Goro gets all up in his business and makes him look like a bitch. When he fights Sonya, and Sonya kills him, by the way, which is spoiler, which is super dumb, because that's not what she wants. She wants to bring him to justice. She wants She's to Batman. arrest him. She's Batman, essentially. Yeah. But, like, he makes him look like such a bitch. But, like, in all the games and stuff, he's viciously smart. He's brutal. It's kind but, of how he's an underworld boss. Yeah, he's an underworld kingpin. But in this, he was just like, "Oh, I'm a plot piece to get Sonya onto the island." Does he? Does he also like Spider Man? He does like Spider Man. He's like, "Bring me Spider Man! Bring me Spider Man! <laughs> Bring me Spider Man!" But it was just super weird because, like, okay, it's like, "Oh, cool! This character's gonna be really awesome." Because, like, he is, and then he just he gets wrecked. R e k t. What about his eye wrecked. laser? Doesn't get to use his eye laser. Doesn't do like I love that. Like they and just... only the main characters get to use their special moves per se. Like Sub Zero gets also Sub Zero gets to use his ice move once, and not even against a real opponent. It's like the very beginning okay. of the turn. He throws an ice ball against this dude that charges him, and he disintegrates. Well, he hits into a wall and he breaks. Like the thing is, is like that's it. It's the main three. That's not even fair. That's main four, and then Scorpion Sub Zero. Shang Tsung do any of his moves? I, I mean, technically, in the beginning, he steals the dude's soul, but I guess whatever. I'm but not that's gonna not count really, that. Yeah. That's like a victory steal. It is. Yeah, but like, it's so weird because like, the thing is, is like you said, if Kano didn't do his move, why give him the laser eye? Yeah, why give him the red eye? Like, it does. It literally does nothing for the story. It'd be like, oh, like, cool, cool. He has this like weird like eye. Cool. Yeah. Like you do have to make sure this is also a movie perspective where you go, hey. Why does that guy have a metal plate in his face? Because he's cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it red? Because he's He's cool. also bad. 
He's a bad man. Oh, and only bad man can have red eyes. But okay, okay, that, that's fine, I guess. It just looks like a little Power Rangers kid set. Like yeah. they just like pasted it onto his face. It's super weird. I mean, Gor- yeah, like Johnny. Uh, I like Goro. Lu- yeah, Luke Kang got uh, gets to use his fireball technically near the end of the movie. Um, he gets to use, and he gets to use the bicycle kick. Um, the only move Johnny Cage gets to use... Oh, he gets to use two. He gets to, he gets to dick punch Gore, which is pretty great. Yeah. And then he gets to use his, uh, shadow kick against Scorpion, which is kind of cool. I remember that. It's, it's right before they go into hell. Like, it... Because all the shadow kick cases is moving, like, really fast and kicking somebody. Okay. It's, it's really subtle. Oh! Okay, that yeah. move. I'm trying and to, like, remember Also, the and Sony technically didn't get to use her abilities, because, like, then again, it's a movie, so you can't really interact with her abilities but she grabs Kano by the neck and like flips him over and then breaks his neck which is kind of her ability she does one of her grabs yeah yeah that's, yeah. that's the one part and then like that's that's it like some of the cooler moves you want to see you're like oh well, okay but what about Goro Goro doesn't do any of his special moves he punches <laughs> he, he punches man I like that they just I like that they just decided to do that like man we gotta fight Goro how do we do this? I also, like, and they put, like, the jokey character against him. He's like, I'll fight him. And they're like, Goro, uh, what do you want to do? I'm going to take his glasses and crush it. See, like, the beginning of the movie. There's a lot of callbacks. Like, oh, like the beginning of the those movie. Those are $500 shades, asshole. Yeah. I think it's... They're, they're wacky fucking 90s action. Yeah. But it's just like... It's so weird. It's just like, oh, man. Uh, how's Goro going to get knocked out? He gets knocked off a ledge. Like... So weird. Dick punches him, runs up to a mountainside cliff. Those are five hundred dollar shades, asshole. Well, no, he says five hundred dollar shades in the beginning of the fight. Does he? I thought he says that. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like Goro walks out to this ledge, like, oh, those are five hundred dollar shades, and starts fighting him. He starts kicking him, and he falls off the ledge. Goro's hanging onto the ledge, and he's like, "This is the part where you fall down," which is a callback to the the beginning. The beginning of the the movie. It's like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. Also, reptiles in this movie. Like the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie. <laughs> reptiles in the movie, which is super weird, because like, when they don't, because the, the movie takes place in two areas. Mo- ma- ma- one in the real world, and then one in Outworld. Which it, Outworld is where it's held. Yes. Yeah. No, Outworld is where they go to finish Oh, yeah. Dumb. In Outworld, though, or in the regular world, Reptile is just this weird, like, reptilian creature. He's not, He doesn't look like any of the other games. He doesn't look like his reptilian version, like, Mortal Kombat. X He's this shitty CG leech-looking yeah. motherfucker with arms. Yeah, it's super weird. And then, so they're fighting. Shang Tsung realizes he's losing. Because um, basically, what happens, it's all Johnny's fault. Is Johnny goes to Luke, uh, Shang Tsung and Beck. I'm going to fight Goro. And he's like, all right. If you want to fight Goro, I'll make you a deal. You can fight Goro, but I get to choose the final place and my opponent for final combat. And he goes, deal. And then, and then like, Raiden right- shows up out of fucking nowhere since you can't do that. And it's like, he's like, Shang Tsung's like, too late. But it's like, Raiden, you can teleport. Why the fuck weren't you there in the first I place? I love that he was like listening omnipotently and then like he just decided to show up late. He goes at the fucking speed of light. Yeah. Lightning, essentially. And he's just like, oh, I'm late. But, so, they go to Outworld and whatnot. Lucky right in the south. Yeah. kill all you. And then, also Katana's there, but she doesn't really do fuck all. Uh, she tells Liu Kang to be like, water is the weakness oh, to yeah, Sub-Zero. Yeah. Katana, that's Katana, dumb. Katana tells him how to beat, uh... Sub Zero, which was stupid. It was a dumb fucking. Um, uh uh-uh. So they go, they go to Outworld, and th- it's Johnny and Liu Kang, a and, and Katana. Yeah. And so they're well, it's, for this part, it's Johnny and Liu Kang. So they're in this area, and for some reason, Liu Kang gets his wild hair up his ass, like he's, he's being watched, and he grabs like behind him, and he grabs reptile and throws him into this weird statue which is weird because reptile would imitates chameleon yeah by being invisible and blending yeah. in the surroundings anyway so he grabs him and throws him to this weird statue that has like an open rib cage and like these tentacles come out and engulf him because Liu kang knew that because yeah whatever right <laughs> but for some reason that turns him into reptile like the, the, humanoid. the green ninja the humanoid the, which again super fucking weird so Liu kang and him fight 
And that's when he gets to use his bicycle kick. Yay, that was cool. For honesty, for honest sake, I forgot about that entire scene. <laughs> just because, like, I was like, is that really how Reptile went out? He just got grabbed by tentacles, and I thought that was the end of the fight. I was like, so he gets oh. he gets bicycle kicked by uh, by Liu Kang pe- through a wall, and then like he dies, and he just turns into like the the reptile thing crawls out of the fucking the mummy thing. Yeah, and it turns into a bunch of maggots and stuff. It's like maggots and like beetles. I was like, what? And the reptile, what the fuck is going on? The reptile crawls up. And he's like, uh uh-uh, uh, not this time. And I'm like, you literally beat him. And then the fucking te- the ribcage thing ate it. It's like, what? Whatever. He, so, like, crushes the reptile. Yeah, he stomps on it. It was like $500 shades, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then, so we go to we go near the end of the movie. Fine, whatever. They're in the final chamber, and he's... Lo- uh, Shang Tsung's like, if you... Talking to Sonya Blade, it's like, if you don't fight me, you forfeit, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. And Johnny Cage and Liu Kang are there, and he's like, no, I'll take your place. Whatever, right? So they start fighting. J- uh, Liu Kang and uh, Shang, Tsung. Shang Tsung. Which is cool. Whatever. It's a, it's a kung fu movie. Sweet. But it was... See, they have the, the, the Mortal Kombat symbol on the ground. Uh, earlier in the movie, it was specifically stated that combat is always one-on-one. Fine, no issue. Liu Kang's... Lo- er, Shang Tsung is losing. He does some weird magic bullshit and summons four other fighters of the souls that of he's the souls captured. that he's used and fights. I was like, isn't he cheating? What the fuck is going on? No, that's still a part of him, so it doesn't have like, cheating. What? Also, these warriors like fight him one on one, which is whatever. That's a so, that's, a, that's so, a kung fu movie trope. So he's video game boss. Yeah, and I was just like, what is going on? And then yeah, and then like the thing is, I get that they were gonna do it. Where, like, he u- he transformed into a soul that he stole, which is the soul of fucking Liu Kang's brother, which is like, yo, soul is mine. But, like, it's the dumbest thing, because, like, he sees the soul as Shang Tsung actually transforms him be- be- into his younger brother before his eyes, and he goes, don't hurt me, brother. Yeah, it's like, I hate that fucking trope, just like, it's obviously not him. Fucking just punch him in the face. Yeah, it'd literally be like, if you were looking at me and all of a sudden I turn into a, a, a squirrel back, I'm just a squirrel, please don't hurt me. Back. Oh that's, shit, you're that's, a squirrel. That's bullshit. <laughs> and you just punch me in the face. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. You just made a smaller target so I could crunch more of your face. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so like, what is, what is going on? <laughs> See, and then he throws him into the spikes and then a vortex of spirits. Yup. And then they end the movie like, hey, we're back at Liu Kang's temple. Shao Kahn orders... A uh, 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 tournament. Yeah. Oh, um, I hate to go back because we're pretty much at the end of the movie. Oh, dude, we don't even have to go like by format to know that. We can fuck around. We did that with the 007. Um. <laughs> so early in the movie, early in the movie, uh, Sonia, <laughs> Sonia, Liu Kang, and Johnny are fighting a bunch of ninjas because whatever, right? <laughs> and yeah sure whatever it's like whatever who cares they're fighting ninjas it's awesome and a bunch more show up and Raiden's just sitting at the steps he's just like don't and he's no. like he's like that's pretty good how about those guys yeah and then there's just a shit ton more ninjas and then Raiden's like ah, uh-uh, I wouldn't do that yeah like he literally he goes, should... he goes I don't think so why does Raiden if he has such a fearful presence Like, let this shit go on. Yeah, like, why would you let your fighters even attempt this when you can just go, yeah, you guys aren't, you guys are in perfect health for your fight because you don't have to fight anybody else. You're not accosted by anything else. Why is he always late? Yeah, he's just, like, it's like he's, he's, like, drunk all the time, I swear. It's like, I'm sorry, guys. Are you sure it isn't Bo Raicho we saw in that movie? Yeah, yeah. It's so weird because it's like, I'm the god of thunder. I can teleport. It's like, okay, that's cool. But why are you always just a step behind? (laughs) Like, just a step behind. It's so weird. <laughs> Why isn't God perfect? I don't get it. It's like, yeah, he's a god who can teleport. He did a judo throw, remember that? He did one judo throw. <laughs> right. That's that's it. Zap. Judo throw Raiden is my new name. Yeah. Like... Zap. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's so dumb. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Like... Okay, so like, there's just so many wacky scenes that like, oh, Johnny Cage is the silly one. They're like, hey, Luke Kang, take my bags for me. It's like, 
I don't know if I should be like, that's racist, or yeah. just like they throw his luggage in the sewers, like, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he tries to bring all his luggage off the boat and he falls first forward. Wouldn't that silly? Wouldn't no, that silly for the kids? Where is wacky. Like, I think that they really should have made it, like, at least PG-13, because I'm pretty sure this movie is a like PG or something. Yeah, it was not. Like... If you gotta do it, you gotta push it to the extremes of PG-13 and be like, yo, we gotta have some motherfucking blood or something. Yeah, that movie was not good. God damn. Like, it's like it's fun, but the action scenes are way too short to care. Yeah. The Katana one, like, it's so weird because it's like Mortal Kombat is supposed to be the death. Yeah. From that, you can, bi- you can understand the base concept. And then most of the fights that you see... Um, no, the guys don't die. Liu Kang fights Katana, and Katana loses, and, um, she doesn't die. Like, no one, ki- like, none of the good guys kill anyone, besides, yeah, besides Liu Kang just going, I'm gonna kill Reptile, cause... Well, no, Liu Kang kills Reptile, Liu Kang kills Sub-Zero with the ice, which was fucking stupid. Water. <laughs> jo- uh, Johnny kills Scorpion. Oh, yeah. And Goro. I don't remember how he actually kills him. He chops his head out with the, the spike shield thingy in Oh, hell. yeah. And then Sonya kills Kano. It's just weird because, like, it's almost selective. Yeah. I don't know. Like, the guy, the the black guy, the first that Sonya fights, he just simply loses, gets, like, knocked no, on Lu, his ass. No, Liu Kang fights Liu him. Liu Kang fights him. He just simply gets... He gets knocked on his ass, which is weird. He doesn't kill him, but Shang Tsung walks up and goes, so like, you, you lose, lose, and then steals his soul. Fuck like, you. Wait, wait, what? But he doesn't steal Katana's soul, because... Yeah. Uh, movie. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. Why? You know we talked, like, more about Mortal Kombat than 007? I don't know. We talked about... We talked a lot. So what was your favorite scene in Mortal Kombat? Uh... I, I mean, I don't mean to sound very juvenile, but I do like the fucking dick punch. I think it's the most hilarious fucking part. Like, I know, I need to punch with the dick. No, but like that Johnny Cage fight that he's given like some non-wacky redemption, but fights in his own wacky way. Like, Those are $500 shades, asshole. Like, I don't know why, but like that scene is good. However, I do like the scorpion fight because like you can literally like see how dumb it is of a movie. Like, it's badass that Johnny Cage fights Scorpion in the woods. Yeah. And then they go to hell. And then you see that the, the, the demon spike thing gets crushed on, like, a literally, like, two-inch thick woodling tree. Like, sapling. Yeah. Well, it slams it. It slams into it. Yeah, but it slams into it. But that thing is, like, yeah. not harder than the human skin. It's, yeah, it's super weird because, like, this thing's a demonic entity out of this... We assume it's a demonic entity coming out of this thing, out of Scorpion's hand, so it's like, but it can't go through wood. Inter- can't go through wood, but you expect to, like, pierce people. Yeah. I don't think he actually hits anybody No, he doesn't that. hit anybody with that move, it's which like, is super funny. It's just like, oh, maybe you should give up your signature move, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Oh, It's geez. like, you know his other signature move is a teleport, right? Like, a teleport attack, right? He no, used no, it, didn't okay. he? No. I don't, I don't believe so. I don't remember him. What... He teleported once. One person he, he, teleported. He breathed over. fire. No, they teleported to hell. They teleported okay, to hell, Okay, so yes. that, that's fair enough. But, like, the only person who teleported was Raiden. Other than that, Scorpion breathed fire and then got his ass kicked. It's... Oh, yeah, like, Sonya was stripped down to, like, battle armor. It's like, I'm gonna put you in battle armor and tie up your arms. Then Shang Tsung will challenge me. That, yeah. That'll make you want to challenge Shang Tsung, fucker. Yeah, so weird. He's like, why... Why? Yeah, I gotta say my favorite scene was probably the, the scorpion fight with Johnny Cage. My my favorite part is when all the children get together and they're like, we're here to help Oh, people. it was so weird. <laughs> At the end of the movie. <laughs> but uh, the reason I like the Johnny Cage fight with Scorpion is because... At is that the, really your favorite? Yes. Okay. I love that one. Because at the end, after he kills... By the way, he kills Scorpion by taking the spike shield that he's been blocking his hellfire with. And just like, it's a serrated shield, which is weird to me. And just like chops into his head, which, is... okay, fine. And then and then, Scorpion fucking explodes. The reason I love that is because at the end of the fight, Johnny Cage throws a signed 
a, an autographed picture of himself on the ground, and it catches fire. Oh, no, 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 And no. that's the end of that fight. No, that was actually from Scorpion. Yeah, he, that's what's complied, is that Scorpion had that picture. No, he, it was a signed picture of him. I didn't see the part where he threw it. Well, but... it, it's implied that he throws it. Okay, from what I thought thinking was because it was really jokey, I thought it was implied that Scorpion dropped that as he fucking exploded. Because oh, no. that that's what I thought, and I was like... Because that's a big thing that Johnny Cage does in a lot of uh, a lot of the games. Okay. It's like, if he kills, like... Especially, like, the newest one, Mortal Kombat X. Yeah. Like, if you kill someone, you like... And don't do a fatality or anything like that, he, it's a signed pitch and he throws it at him. He's like, that's fucking great. Speaking of which, you see the selfie mechanic in the new Tekken? Yes. Dumb. But I like it. Um, yeah, overall, like, Mortal Kombat was a super campy movie. Yeah. But overall fun. No, it's, it's, it is. It's fucking, oh, God. Mm. I think that's all we have to say about Mortal Kombat. Uh, you want to leave? Yeah, we leave ranking to the end. Yeah. Okay. Next Dumb. we watched Judge Dredd. Oh, God, with, the, Stallone, with Stallone and Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. <laughs> and the villain who hasn't been in anything... Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> They're like, oh man, how, how what else do we get? James Earl Jones for a, for a fucking uh, text scrawl yeah. to announce we it. We think it's te- James Earl Jones. We haven't looked it up. I'm pretty sure but it's I'm pretty sure because yeah. the voice looks so similar. But this movie is so weird. Like, it's an action. Like, I, Oh, and I, Jurgen Prock now as yes. man. Um, I haven't read any of the Dread comic books. I... I I, you played the Dread vs. Death game. Yeah, that you? was alright, but that's not really a comic... Like, it's still a game. It's probably more accurate than a movie. Um, It's so weird, because, like, in this movie, he's super jokey. Like, not super jokey, but, like, he makes a lot of jokes that I think... Uh, maybe in the comic books he makes some jokes, but not as much as this. I knew you'd say that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what, that's the other thing he says. So, Rob Schneider gets... Also, Rob Schneider gets fucked over in this movie, because, like, he just gets released from prison... He, he gets, like, a housing card, like, where he's supposed to live, and he goes there, and there's a block war. So, like, there, there's fighting between people. And it's like, okay, so what does he do? He hacks into this, like, food cart so he can hide, so he doesn't die. It's like a garbage and food cart. Yeah, it's like, it sells recycled food, which, ugh. Also, it's it's paid advertisement, since on the top it has a spinning top that says Coke. Yeah. So, there's your money, man. Um. So, after the block war happens, Dredd... Points his gun at this fucking drone thing. He's like, get no, out. Knowing somehow. And Rob Schneider gets out and he's like, what was I supposed to do? And Trevor's was like, you could have jumped out the window. He's like, and fall 40 stories? It'd kill me. Uh, it'd kill me. He's like, maybe, but it'd be legal. And he, and he goes, uh... Holy shit. <laughs> he goes, how do you plead? He goes, not guilty. And Dredd goes, I knew you'd say that. And he says, I knew you'd say that. Like, it's so supposed to be many... the 90s joke. Yeah, man. like so many times during the movie. But it's like... No, Rob Schneider was just not, like, his character was just trying not to die. I was like, what Here's the, the thing. Fuck? Here's the thing. If that's to be believed, that would mean laws have been changed because suicide is considered illegal. Yeah, which is So funny. jumping out the window would have been breaking to property. Yeah. Property damage. Uh, public disturbance by splattering stuff on the fucking road. Yeah. And then suicide. Yeah, it was so weird. Five years. <laughs> yeah. But he's dead. Oh, well. Um, Chain up his dead body. <laughs> You're going to jail, mister. You got anything? Oh, a smart mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Just Hell fucking yeah. slam his body into the <laughs> fucking cab. Oh! God, yeah. Like, this movie's just so weird. I Like, I think it's a, it's just a weird, dumb thing. Because, like, what was it? It's, it's so dumb. Because, like, at the end, you, you just kind of, like, get that feeling. Like, this is stupid, generic 90s. Like, it's... It's dumb because they try to build it as if it were, like, a joking action comedy, in a mm. sense. Because, like, I knew you'd say that was, like, his catchphrase. Yeah. And then they're like, why? Why doesn't he just say, I am the law, as his fucking catchphrase? Yeah. Oh, the, the other thing, too, is, like, so near, I don't know what part of the movie, but the Hershey, which is his partner, de facto partner, open, pulls this or this guy's, like ramming back and forth in a car and whatnot. He pulls her over. Par- she, like, opens the door and's like, get out of the car. He's like, you better leave. I have friends in high place, blah, 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 blah. And then Dredd just shows Dredd up. Shows, Dredd shows up and he's like, and you know, he's like, oh, shit, because everyone knows who Dredd is, which is, that's kind of neat. But 
this is this kid's like fourth offense or something like that. And so Dred's like, call the the pickup crew. He's like, what are you gonna have me towed? He's like, something. It's like something like that. This or for, for first offense, I would, but this is your fourth. So and they walk tur- walk to, towards a curb, and the guy's like, oh, oh, he's yeah, like, what are you yeah. doing? Dred says grenade, which his gun he has a the lawgiver two, which is the, their gun. It can do all sorts of crazy different rounds. And it changes to different, like, types Yeah, like, of it can fire. do the full auto. It can do this weird split one. Okay, there's two-way split, full auto. Okay, I'm trying to count the first movie. Two-way split, full auto, single shot, semi-auto, oh, um... F- flare. Flare. Um, and grenade. Grenade? Yeah. I, I think that's all. Yeah, that sounds right. In the gun. Uh, armor piercer. Yes! Um, so he says grenade. Which makes his gunfire grenade. And fires it at this dude's car. Which, that doesn't sound like something Dredd would do maybe in the comic books. Because, like, that would cause a lot of damage. He just fired a fucking grenade at a at car. Least, at least our understanding of Dredd is that, like, we have very... I He probably has more, more interpretation than I do. Because I, like, looked up a little bit and I was like, yeah. But, yeah, that's a good one. I like it. Top snack. But, uh, like, I have, like, a very little addition, you know, in, uh, at to add on it. It's just, like, he, from what I understand, he goes, there's a direct black and white to law. Law. Law is, law is, and he would do everything that an officer would. And in this world, you have to be extreme. But this is literally, like, a day scene where, like, nothing's really going on. He's just yeah. like, oh, this asshole is driving without a license. Um, Okay. And he just, like, blows up the fucking car. Yeah, it's like, that could hurt a lot of people. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, didn't you say, like, Dread probably wouldn't do that because of yeah. danger? Yeah, I was like, that's, that, that'd be a lot of damage. Like, that's reckless endangerment. But, and, yeah, so the principal villain of this movie, which is weird, too, is... Rico. Rico, which you later find out is they're both him and Dread are clones of the top people of they're like genetically mixed yeah clones of but dread turned out okay and for some weird reason reiko turned evil for w- whatever reason he he like was genetically psychotic and dread is genetically the law yeah it's I, super I don't weird. It's fucking i don't know and reiko frames uh it's dread like, for a murder because that's like rico right Rico. Yeah. What was I saying? You're saying Rayco. Rayco. Sorry. That's my favorite company. Yeah. Rayco. R- we produce jam. <laughs> yeah. Rico, um, frame dread because their DNA is the same, and that's how the the dread uh, the lawgiver weapons work. They they're based on DNA. Whenever that somebody fires the gun, the the round is marked with their DNA, so you know who fired the gun. Well, they have the exact same DNA, so he got charged with the crime. So, dread gets. Initially sentenced to death, but one of the top justice, like, one of the things is if you take the walk, which is you go out into the cursed earth, which is where they the area is. Outside the megaopolis. N- yeah, outside the mega cities, uh, They... They do, honor your last they, wish. They honor the last wish of the judge, and this was to be lenient on Dredd, so they imprison him for life instead. Which, fine, I guess. Um, but the so, imprisonment camp is like an Aspen? Yeah, Aspen, cold. But, so they're on this prison transport ship. And who does who does Stallone get next right next to? Oh, Rob you know, Schneider. Rob Schneider. Yeah, I see his wacky because yeah. he meets. It's like I believe this is fate. And he's just like the law wasn't wrong. So yeah, they have this weird conversation, which it 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 one hundred percent irrelevant. It obviously points out the flaw in fucking in Dredd's logic. It, yeah. In Dredd's logic, where he's just like law is everything. I was framed, but law is truthful and doesn't lie. So it's like the law is never wrong, but he's. Rob Schneider was like, but the same thing happened to you. He's in, like, Stallone Dread has the look of, like, Ur, like, he can't, you know, like, his brain crashed. But the thing, like, the thing is, is, like, Rob Schneider's fucking dumb reasoning is not the same. No, yeah. He broke the law. He fiddled with the droid, whatever. He's like, no, I'm wrongly in prison. He's like, you're not. You broke the law. He did, but I can understand that, like, he was doing it to survive... But in a black and white reasoning? No, absolutely. For, yeah. for Dredd's black and white reasoning, yes. Absolutely. Um, I, just, I don't see that logic, though. And the, yeah. I, I stole a soda can because I was thirsty. Yeah, but you still stole. But I was thirsty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so then, like, it pans out to this, to this area, and there's just these hillbillies 
that you later find out are cannibals, and they shoot down this plane. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting, whatever. And there's the, the, the famous uh, angel family, that's what they're called. Yeah. And they praise the Lord and all that, which is which is cool. They have this weird cyborg son, and Rob Schneider tries getting on their side by saying, praise the Lord and all this stuff, and he gets let down, Dred's like, I forgot to say one thing. They're cannibals. And he's like, oh, no. And so they try to, like, bumfuck his asshole. Yeah. So it, it initiates a fight scene. Dredd wins, obviously. But these guys, an execution squad, shows up to kill everyone. Why not? Of course, Dredd wins. With, but they the actually... help, with the help of the Chief Justice, who stood down because he knew some shit was going on. And then Chief Justice gets rightly, like, just fucking Yeah, wrecked. so the, cy- the cyborg dude... Who got knocked out earlier just like impales this dude with his cyborg arm. You want to talk more about the cyborg man? He's got like this dial on his yeah, fucking head. He's got this head. weird dial on his head that like I don't know controls his emotions or whatever. It's, it's not it's clearly stupid. explained. He's just like I'm gonna turn this dial and you better not anger him. He's yeah, just, I think it like I think it affects his, like his aggression levels. Whatever. During the fight scene, he doesn't even take down Mechano Man. He just kind of like turns down the dial. He's like, shut yeah. up. And then the second fight, they, the second fight they have is after he kills the Chief Justice, which is this is the second issue I had with Dread, was, by my understanding, Dread is a very calculated person who's who always keeps his cool. Well, at this point, he loses his shit and just like charges it, but like it's like raw emotion. Yeah, there's it's a, like there's, holy shit. There's just a bunch of guns on the ground from like these people they've killed. So like, wouldn't he just pick up a gun and just shoot this guy? But no, he decides to hand to hand combat him. Which, okay, that's stupid. This dude is. Way stronger than you. He's got ge- one arm, one arm, but, but it's a mechanical arm that like has blades and shit. And do you know how he? Do you know how he beats him? Is <laughs> the mechanical man goes to attack him? He misses and hits the wall and like it, it sticks his arm to the wall. Dread grabs like a piece, like one of the wires on him, and pulls it out. And he's like, "Uh, you're guilty of abusing city electricity." Yeah, abusing city electricity. And and he says, "How do you how how do you plead?" Mechanical and, and man goes, goes and Dred goes, "I knew you'd say that," and just sticks a live wire into his spine and blah, and he dies. I'm like, "What the fuck?" Like it was the dumbest li- time to use that line. Yeah, she's like, "I knew you'd say that." Like it's so weird. Anyway, so at this point, like Reiko, do you want or Raiko yeah. is trying to get this. Wait. Like, the clone's up and running again. It turns out one of the head officials that convinced the dude to step down was like, Hey, I'm Not also right. bad and working with Rico. Yeah. He's like, Oh, I'm going to open up Project... I'm just going to call it Lazarus, because it's not Lazarus, but it is essentially yeah, Lazarus. Yeah, Gemini or some Geneva. Lilarius? It had an L in it. Whatever. But, like, all it was is just like, Yep, this is the, the program that created men... And they're like, yeah, ever since Dread left, the police has gone to shit. It's like, yeah, what, what is that supposed to say? Is that like saying that all the other judges are lazy? I don't know what it is, but it's like they, they shut down this program because, well, first of all, Reiko showed up. So it was Reiko and Dread, and it wasn't cost efficient because it took them a really long time. But now that they're thinking about reopening because it, it, they could fully grow a person in like eight hours. 30 years later, essentially, yeah. they, they were like, oh, let's reopen it up. How often would it take? Eight hours? To He's build like, a full wow. adult. Crazy. That's dumb. Yeah. And then... Did we talk about the picture breakdown? Because that's fucking hilarious. But we have not. Go you for s- it. You scan the picture. So, like, they, so fucking Hershey was like, hey, I need to do some investigating. It seemed like Judge was wrongly accused. And the trial that she represented, she was the lawyer... She's like, well, you did your best. All right, cool. She looks in Judge's locker, Judge Judge's locker, and like... There's a picture, and it's like, oh, cool, it's him, a ba- it's like a mother, a father, and, and baby, baby dread. dread. And then it's like, oh, okay, and then slides out another picture underneath. Oh, it's him and Rico. Who's that well, she, man? Yeah, she doesn't know who Rico is yet. And they're like, oh, let me try face recognition at my house. And oh, it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, it's like, nope, you've been cut off. So he goes, and he's like, I'm going to... I'm gonna give this to that guy who who knows pictures and Photoshop. Yeah, no, she, he knows computers really well. It happens in the trial. Yeah, and then like he takes the picture to him. He's like, "You scanned the wrong picture." Yeah, he's like, you just wasted three hours scanning the wrong picture. He's like, "Yeah, well, but there's a lot of abnormalities here." It's like, what do you mean? You no, know, he just says they did a lot of work for a fake, and she's like, "What do you mean a fake?" It's just like, okay, so it's a picture of the mom, the dad. They're on a pic. They're by a picnic table, and the babies just sit on a picnic table. 
And they're like, oh, okay. It's like, I could just reverse all the ab- abnormalities. Okay, so we take out the, the dad. The, the mom, the dad. And, and, and then, then, and then mom, the dad, the background. And the foreground. And the foreground. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And the baby's the only thing real. I'm like, I don't get how this actually works. And it's just, it's just baby dread in like this In this factory. lab. And I'm yeah. like, you, did you just reverse Photoshop? That's dumb. I'm no wizard, but I don't think you can do that. Uh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like the thing is, is that immediately if everything else was abnormalities in pixel size, you know what you would do? Hmm. You would immediately assume that the baby is the abnormality. Take him out. And be like, well, it's just a picture of mom and dad. Whatever. Yeah. You wouldn't be like, well, this one's weird. Yeah. That's dumb. Why? No. And so, like, near the end of the movie, they were gonna... The Chief Justice... Is like, is, hey... Is, like, the evil dude, the ch- evil Chief Justice, who took the other guy's place, was like, Riker, what are you doing? Why is there a new DNA sample? He's like, well, 30 years, blah, blah, blah. 30 years, gonna clear out the fridge, gonna use a new one. Yeah. And he uses his own arm, because he's genetically insane. Also, like, the, how they take this genetic material is, like, just these four giant syringes. I'm like... Wouldn't, like, just some They're blood... not even, like, syringe needles. Yeah. They're, like, big as fucking pens. Yeah, they're just, like, big needles that just go into his, into his like, his forearm. Like, don't you just need a little bit of blood? Like, it's the like, thing it, it looks like he was donating fucking bone marrow. Yeah, like, the thing is, you could see the blood drip down his arm. It's like, that's not how donating samples happen. like, that's ridiculous. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. God damn it. Yeah, it's so weird. And it... <laughs> So, it also happens that this Lazarus project is in the Statue of Liberty that they relocated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. It, it's so fucking dumb. Just if I, <laughs> So, they're like, oh man, Rico shows up. And they're like, we've come to arrest you. And so, hot Asian doctor who hated Rico and bitched, bitched with him decides, oh... Now she's evil. Now, now she fully cooperates because... Because re- reasons. Because movie. But like... <laughs> the fucking like... Oh man, we're gonna fight. Oh, well I need reinforcements. Intelligence. Hatch the fucking... Hatch the abortion clones. Because they're like... He's like, they're only 60% complete. And I like, don't care! He's like, I need reinforcements. And like, he's like, okay. He's <laughs> like, that doesn't work that way actually. And it's like, for some reason everything starts exploding. I think my process is because like Dread before started ch- like shot a bunch of stuff in the room. Like, look like some computer terminals and some glass same chambers. It's like, it starts hatching them, but like then a bunch of shit starts exploding. Because it's an action movie, so fuck yeah. I love that nothing came of that. They literally just came out of the tubes and then, like... Yeah, they, like, wake up and then, like, nothing happens. Like, what's going on? Did they so, just die? So you literally just made those prosthetic clones for no reason. Yeah, it's like, did they, were their lungs not fully functioning and they just died? Anyway, so the <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, dumb bullshit. <laughs> Rico and Dredd are fighting... Uh, in the Statue of Liberty's torch. And they're fighting and whatnot. Blah, blah, no, it's blah, the blah, top blah. of the head. Is it the top of the head? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because it's like cracked like right up yep. here, the top yeah, left quadrant. Right. So they're fighting there and Rico, Rico knocks him off near the edge. He's hanging on by a thread, whatnot. And... I'm by prayer. Ra- yeah. Rico's <laughs> is like, I judge you for, you know, your crimes against the flesh and crimes, crimes of being a man when we could be a god. How do you plead? And, fuck, I don't remember what Judge said. He's like, no, you do. Yeah, and then I think Rick, Rick was like, I knew you'd say that. I was like, Jesus Christ, again. Rako goes to shoot him, but it's, he's out of ammo, which is like, okay, that's lucky. But, J- Dredd takes his weapon and fires a flare, which I have no idea how you knew he had the flare there, which blinds... He's like, he's like such a great distance away, I don't know why he grabbed it. Well, no, like, he put the gun, like, basically to his forehead. Yeah. And it was, like, click, it's, like, out of ammo, but then he, yeah, he... Signal grabs, flare! Yeah, he's, like, signal flare! And he fires it, which blinds Reiko or some shit, and then he just Because he looks at it! Yeah, he looks directly at this flare, it's like, why, why would you, why would you do that? And he just grabs him and throws him off the Empire, uh, the Statue of Liberty, and it's just like, huh. Okay. Due process is fucked. And then, so... That's how they fight. So the end of the movie is happening, and 
the tech wizard from the first area is like, that was being broadcasted everywhere. Everyone knows that you're innocent and blah, 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 blah. And this other judge walks up and be like, we need to rebuild the council. Show them that we're really still the good guys. We need you to be the chief justice. He's like, I'm just a, I'm just a street judge and I'm very late for work. And it's like, okay, that, that's a cool sentiment, but we fucking still need a chief judge. Like, what are you doing? Can you nominate someone? Maybe Hershey Please. would be a good job. I mean, like, like you're, you're, you're like, I, the... yeah, like what the fuck? Oh, we forgot to talk about dumb chasing when bike. Dumb chase. Oh my god. Were they fucking have the dumb bikes that are like somehow like they they're three D three dimensional movement, so they go forward, back, left, right, up, down, and they fly these bikes. These fucking mechano bikes that um Apparently they're so janky that they're hard to fix sometimes. Well no, it was that one at the training academy is the one they take. Yeah. The one that was janky. Just like the beginning of the movie. And, and he fixed it he fixed it by fonzing it, by just smacking it. Oh, it happens a few times that it breaks. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, oh. And he's just like, yep, yep. And so Rob Schneider's flying on the back of this, and they're like, dog fight chasing them. Yeah, so, so yeah, they're, they're ch- <laughs> getting chased. And earlier in the movie, you see this, like, sign. It's, it's like a holographic sign. Or you think it's holographic at first, but it's, like, flickering on and off. But you find out it's, like... Solid energy or something like because shit, Rob Schneider's like Aah. he's like what do you think it's, but it's like so it's solid energy or some you know some shit like that it's like pure fucking laser light yeah and it's like opening and closing and obviously dread flies through it unscathed another bike flies through unscathed and then his third bike it closes on me blows up it's like okay what fucking city that knows because like earlier in the movie there's a cab that brings Rob Schneider a flying cab by the way that brings Rob Schneider to his area it's like okay in an area that you know that has flying vehicles and flies stuff like this why would you have a solid energy thing that could seriously hurt people like why what would the you, fuck why would you have lasers yeah like why, as your fucking advertisement logo why would it be just like a hologram like oh he flew through a hologram it, in the, the, the in, image was distorted for a couple seconds yeah in the courtroom scene they clearly show that they have hologram technology and then they're like uh, no, we need lasers. Yeah. I mean, God, you know, destroying advertisement, that's a death sentence, man. You, you, fuck you. And then, so, they're dogfighting again. Dread jumps onto the other bike with the enemy, like, throws him off of it. He throws, yeah, he just throws off another dude who's just kind of following orders, so, like, that's kind of weird to me. And, like, Rob Schneider's on the other bike, and he's about to crash into this fucking building. And... Judges. Dread grabs him and is like, uh, need this, a lift. The, the face scene, the shot on Rob Schneider lasts way too long. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's kind of uncomfortable how much he's, like, screaming that he's gonna crash. He's like, I wanna crash, I wanna crash, I wanna yeah, crash. it feels kind of real. Crash. It was just like... It's just like, I don't... Again, know nothing about the comic books, really. Just from, you know, very little bit of knowledge I have. It seems like Dread wouldn't do that. He would just, like, save him right away. Like, what the fuck? You're just being an asshole. Like, what the fuck? I think it's so it's, fucked. I think it's so dumb that Rob Schneider doesn't catch on. Like he's like, yeah, don't people call him Shred Dread? Yeah. What the that, fuck you doing? That happens like a, a few times. It actually fucks him over like three times. Yeah, because like one in the prison in the prison uh the prison transport the ship. prison transport ship. Somebody's like, Dredd. somebody's like, oh, that's Dread. Yeah. Thankfully, I had this fucking blade in my yeah, boot. He goes to shiv him, but then you know explosions. He shivs, unlocks his fucking chest restraint, which is so weird. And it's um, dumb. And then the gun, when they shoot down the transport ship, and he drops the Gatling gun, the the, the guard. Oh yeah, he and has this sh- like weird gun, which I don't know what you would call, it, but yeah, the <laughs> the like the, really... the, the transport ship explodes in the back. The guard drops his gun, and like typical action movie the gun just starts going off because because action dropped. movie and just annihilates the piles i'm like what the fuck um the second time it fucked uh dread over was with the angel family he's like what are we gonna do dread and he's and the angel family's like oh judge dread and they check his tattoo it really it is really, dread like, Schneider, you, you talk way too much and then so they're in the hall of justice where he's not supposed to be because you know it's all bad and whatnot but dread is like dressed up like a yeah, fucking he's dressed up like just any other judge, so that there's no possible way you could know. But Rob Schneider's character is like, "What are we gonna do, Dread? Because you know we need fake tension right now." Some fucking guy turns around, huh? yeah. and he like he like looks once, and he's like, "Oh, that was really weird." 
And then, like, for some fucking reason, he decides, he looks back, and then you forget about him, and then a moment later, the dude tries to pursue. Yeah, it's like, so like, I knew it was you! I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, it's so weird. Dumb! So what was your what was your favorite scene in the movie? Uh, oh my god. I think it's just that, that epic scene of just saying law. I, I think that might be the favorite scene in the movie, but like if we have to tap badass points, I think it's just fucking great seeing him just like, um, not that begin, not the ending fight scene. Where he's fighting in the fucking, uh, the judge area. After Jurgen Brock now shoots himself, he's like, Psh, ah! Like, that was a smart move, honestly. He's like, he killed the council! Mm, and everybody's like, like him. Yeah. yeah. And then that epic sweet jump, bro. Subscribe, like, favorite if you like more. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's oh like, Ugh. Robert Jr.'s like, no, I'm going to hit every step on the way down because I'm the geeky character. Yeah. But that scene does, you betray the law! Yeah, the law! It's so weird. It's like a fucking dragon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, is there... What fucking dragon goes by law? Mm. Is lawful? Uh, well, gold dragons are lawful. Lawful good. Can they spit fire? Yeah, they spit hot fire. I want to do that. Yeah. I want to be a, dra- a gold dragon be like... Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah. It's so the dumbest fucking thing. We know he said something else about this stupid thing. Oh, the ending scene where he drives off and he just, his bike hits a cliff. Not like hits a cliff, but he's just like on the cliff that's he's out, just looking out, in the out to the city. And he's just like, okay, but why did you drive your bike towards like essentially the length, the width of a girder to overlook a city? Because outlook of a city... It's like it's it's a kind of cool scene, but it's also like kind of dumb. It's dumb logic wise, but it, cinematically it makes sense. Oops. Yeah, we're good. Um. Oh, your favorite scene? Oh, that's a. I th- Is it the abortions? <laughs> what? <laughs> the abortion clones? Oh no no no. <laughs> um, I think my favorite scene was actually near the beginning of the movie where Dread first shows up, because like there's these two judges pit, like they think they're pinned down, but they're just, and then Dread just shows up and he's just standing there. And the oh, one the guy, fact that he knows? Yeah, the one kid's like, what is he doing? And then Dred's like, they're using, like, 22 millimeters or something like that. They're using... They're, st- we're at 300... They're, they're at 300 meters. Its effective range is 200 meters, and we're wearing armor. There's no way it could hurt us. We're fine. I was like, all right, that was actually kind of badass, because he's just, like, walking through he, this gunfire, not giving a single The fuck. fact that he tactically knows is yeah, about, was, like, the best was part. was pretty sweet. And then he goes, systematically dismantles these... Um, yeah. These, uh, thugs, which is kind of cool. It was kind of neat. And then, like, of course he has, like, his fucking megaphone, which I don't know where that is. Is that, like, an intercom system? Well, like, it, it, like, popped down. It was just, like, a... Yeah, yeah there's, there was a speaker. Like, there was the microphone, but where was the speaker for that yeah, shit? Yeah, I have no idea. It was just like... <clears throat> you are charged with destruction of property. I'm the judge, jury, and executioner. Come get us! Yeah. I knew you'd say that. Yeah, was, I knew you'd say that. Oh my god. <laughs> like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, how many times... If, if there was a counter for how many times yeah. he said it, I think I'd love it. Like, that that was... Like you said, that was his catchphrase for the movie. Why did they push... Like, I get that catchphrases were really something in, like, 80s and the 90s. So, like, that was 95. We had... 92 was Terminator 2. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, that had catchphrases, so probably the echo effects of that were still yeah. affecting that. Like, we need to have Arnold say a catchphrase, I'll be back, hasta la visa, and he had more. So, obviously that was there. Mm. Because of because of catchphrase. Yeah. I guess just because it was one catchphrase and because it was dumb. Yeah. And he was really jokey. Like, he was actually one-liner jokey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what did, there were some jokes. We forgot to mention the jokes in 007, but... That's whatever. Those were just puns, which were kind of funny. I, I always love the Pierce Brosnan I love, fucking I love jokes. Puns. They're fucking hilarious. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I can't think of any of the ones from 
The world is not enough off the top of my head. I, I can't think of them because they're all really context based. Yeah, exactly. It's like holy shit. Except for the end where he's like, I thought Christmas only came once a year when he's when he's fucking. Yeah, he obviously does shit like that. So uh, it's like, okay, that was. What did he say at the snowmobiles? I have no idea. I okay. can't remember. Um. Oh yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah. Duh. Um. <laughs> the hot air balloon exploding in the fucking 007. So stupid. <laughs> I was like, that's dumb. Yeah. Uh, Judge Dredd, though, like, so your favorite scene is just where he's just sitting out there, and he's like, yep, I know. Yeah, I know that your weapons cannot hurt me from that distance. Like, oh, that was actually kind of badass. Like, because he just doesn't give a fuck. I like that Rob Schneider doesn't, like, grab a gun and make himself look like an asshole. Yeah. Like, he's just, like, they don't shove a gun in his hand and go, ah! Um. I don't know how to use this. Like, okay. But, yeah, no. He said, what was it, his crime was only, like, tampering with a bot, which would have been, like... Five years. No, no, no. It wasn't that that was the that was the, five, the sentence. Tampering with the robot was, like, he said, like, something community service or something like that. It was, like, really weird. And then he said, wait, let's ID him. What's your name? Oh, dude, he's a, he's a, he just got out. Oh, habitual. And it was habitual thing, so it five became years. five years. Yeah. Yeah. Which was super weird, yeah. So, I don't, it was like something really minor, because he didn't say years. Yeah, yeah. He just said like something small time, because like, Rob Schneider didn't react. He's just like, oh, okay. And he's just like, oh, it's habitual. Fucking five years. How do you yeah. plead? Not guilty. I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's it for that Judge Dread movie. Yeah. Now we're gonna talk about the infinitely better Dread movie. <laughs> the twenty twelve Dread movie. Yes. It was That was made awesome. for three D. Yeah, it was you could definitely tell it was made for three D. Starring Doom Man. Yeah, there was a Grim Grim Uh yeah, the character Grim from Which I thought was from fucking I thought, because I was told that it was someone from Supernatural, and then it was just, oh, it was Carl Orban, the guy who literally did Doom movie. He just—he was in Star Trek. He's he's Scotty. I don't know. No, he's not Scotty. Uh, he's in Star Trek. Uh, uh, McCoy. He's in, McCoy. Into, into dark, into darkness. He's the the Star Trek movie remakes, which yeah. are, um, from what I understand, no, it's because uh, they're big dumb budget. But yeah. The Dread movie was, was pretty fucking sweet. And the thing is, it's obviously made for 3D. Yeah. But it's not obtrusive like Jaws 3D or mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, it's My Bloody Valentine 3D. <laughs> I also liked how in the difference between the two Dread movies in Judge Dread, the St Stallone one, is their body armor was definitely very I think it was ostentatious. More... But then again, it was 90s, so like I get it. Like, the thing is, is it's probably more reminiscent of the Dread at the time. Yeah. The Dread at the time was like, dude, we're like mid-90s image comics. Yeah, because he has like, like the, the, giant, the giant gold pauldrons and whatnot. The gold pauldrons. What, the fact that they're uneven is like the worst part. Yeah. Like, one's but a dress. But in Dread, like, he's wearing like tactical combat armor. I was like, that's fucking cool. Yeah, they look like kind of like rubber suits, but eh. yeah. They look they look like armor. They look like suits. For um, a fucking one. It was super, yeah. I just, I like Dread a lot. Oh, so good. The difference in the dynamic between Dread and Judge Dread is that Dread feels less like a one man army. I'm gonna do this. There's just a you know character there. Mm -hmm. Dread goes, hey, here's the bitch who can do pretty cool things, yeah, here's and then this other here's lady. Dread. It's basically the basic plot of Dread is there's a cadet who failed by like three points. But, she's but Dread, psychic. Dread was not was like a fail is a fail, but she's a mutant, which normally is bad. But she's psychic, a very powerful psychic for this area. Like she can read minds and blah 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 blah. Which is for this time period. It's like mutants are yes. weird because yeah, it's like, very like she's like she, uh, the one lady was like she's the most powerful psychic we've ever seen by a large margin. He's like I want you to give her a, uh, a field test, pass or fail, throw, f fall her in the deep, throw her in the deep end. He's like it's all deep end. I was like that's a cool one. I love that they didn't go into Dread like it's a deep critical analysis of them. They were just like, nope, making a dumb action movie. Yeah, it wasn't, there was no backstory. It was just like, here you go, fucking Dread's doing shit. Dread's Dread. I love it. Like, the thing that, <clears throat> the thing that makes it better is that she didn't carry a helmet and they made a reason for it. Yeah. 
Because honestly, if she wore a helmet, it would have been really shitty for those action scenes. Yeah, exactly. Because like, oh, uh, which one is the helmet? Shit. Uh, yeah. It was cool though too, because like, um, so she Dread tells her that she's running the show. So they go to this area called Peach Trees, where there was just three, three murders. These people were skinned alive and thrown off, thrown off the. Uh, it's like seventy floors. Yeah. The, well, the building has a total of two hundred floors. But they were thrown but off like thrown, Yeah, they were thrown off the seventy ninth floor, which that's a fuck of a drop. They were also given this drug called Slow Mo, which is the which is insane. The entire ploy of the movie for 3D was the slow motion. Yeah, and what the slow mo drug does is it makes you perceive time at one percent speed. That's fucking crazy. So these guys were were skinned alive, then before they were thrown off this building, down the center shaft, were given this drug. So it felt like an eternity to them. It's like that's terrifying so like the thing with this movie is that the slow motion had reason and like not only that is they used it so much that i'm like okay as a movie making concept you did that to pad out the movie and i applaud you for it because it's credible yeah it wasn't just like look at these (laughs) slow-mo scenes just to be slow-mo it's like look at these slow-mo scenes to be cool and be like oh okay this makes sense no um so they they show up to this area called p street and dread's like rookie are you uh are you nervous? She's like, no. He's like, well, you forgot your helmet. She's like, oh, well, the helmet interferes with my psychic ability. He's like, so oh. would a bullet. He's like, a bullet would do the same thing. It's like, that's really cool, actually. That's, that's like, clever. That, that's that. a clever way to explain in the story why she doesn't have a helmet. I was like, fucking sweet. That's awesome. Like, the thing with the test was that the assessment test that he brings him on, it's like, it's a ride-along like that Kevin Hart movie. But shit's, shit's like going the beginning down. of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, so, yeah. They go to this area, they're going to try to find this drug dealer. Or this this area. They found the right place to go. Well, they bust down the door and they, they kill everyone who needs to get killed. Yeah. The psychic lady sees this one black guy. What's his name? Caleb? K? I think they just call him K. K. I think they just call him K. And she's like, oh, this is the drug dealer. This is the guy who killed and murdered these people. How and, sure are you? And then she, she's like, 99%. She's like, 99.9. She's like, I can't execute on somebody at 99%. And then he's like, which I love this line. He's like, if you just confess now, it'd save me a lot of paperwork. He's like, didn't think so. Didn't think so. Like, this guy is mostly silent in the movie, but, like, his mugging throughout yeah. the movie is fucking rad. It's pretty great. I don't, I like that he's silent for that reason, is that it, the way that you convey emotion through nonverbal things. Well, I mean, he's not silent, but he doesn't have the most lines in the world. No. But when he speaks, he speaks with authority. He speaks with reason. It's not like, I'm just going to speak. Ah! Yeah, they're not just having conversation. He's, he's not Rob yeah, Schneider. Yeah, he speaks <laughs> with a purpose. It's not just a conversation. It's a conversation to convey something. It's not just bullshit conversation. <laughs> oh which is, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, no. Uh, but, like, the thing is, like, with the story, is just, like, it's so simplistic, is... Mama is this girl who, like, this infamous drug lord who overtook this entire mega block, this megaplex of fucking living quarters. Because, just like Dread, the rest of the world is scorched and fucking uninhabitable. Mm-hmm. So these mega blocks, uh, are, as, opposed to, as opposed to Legos, um, you can't. <clears throat> but, like, she's like, oh, there used to be, like, four gangs controlling this thing. She did it herself by, like, taking over this entire With thing. With violence and whatnot. She made a very strong show of force. Yeah, and that's it. Like, there's, like, yep, they take the one person that could bring her in as a connection. Like, because, you know, it's judge interrogation. So, mm. you're gonna get You're gonna, you're gonna crack. You're gonna get fucked. And there's just, like, judge interrogation. So, whatever, you're gonna get fucked. And then they're like, um, we're gonna lock down the entire building, uh... And everyone inside says, oh, well, uh, you can uh, d- kill the judges. Kill, kill the judges or stay out of the way. It's like, oh, it's okay. That's kind of Kill cool. the judges, stay out of the way. And if you kill them, we'll open up the blast doors. Which the blast doors is like, you're locked from the entire outside. Yeah, because it's a, a death contest or something like that. That they trick the, the central area. Anyway. But yeah, it's basically a, a, war war. Ti- a wartime situation. Yeah. Which blocks the judges' comms, which is kind of... Cool. It blocks comms, and it's blast shielding that goes yeah. through it all. But So they're going through this huge complex, and 
So if they think they kill the judge, like, at this point, the judges have killed 30 of their men and not taken a scratch. Mama's like, okay, we're going to do it my way. And they roll out these two giant chain can, giant chain guns. Like, holy shit. And start just unloading. Like, just destroy this whole level of this block. And, like, it's it's not like it's a one, like, a 30-second scene. This fucking scene of them just demolishing with chain guns goes on for, like, a solid, like, three minutes. It was pretty sweet. It's fucking amazing. And so, like, Dredd's sprinting past, like, all this stuff. And he sees, like, the outside wall. And he tells his gun. It, it works similar to the other, other movie where, like, he just tells the gun what type of round he wants. So he says high X, which is high explosive. And, and blows a hole in the wall. In the beginning of the movie, they do show the DNA recognition. Yeah, which is cool. <clears throat> which it looks like an LCD radio on the mm. gun. And it's like, okay. So the rounds, we didn't for, we forgot to list the rounds for this one. So it's high explosive. High explosive. Uh, armor hot, piercer. Hot shot. Hot shot, which is like an inc- uh, oh, what's a uh, flaming round. Then there's incendiary, which is like white phosphorus almost. There's stun. Mm-hmm. And... Silencer. Silencer, which isn't a type of round, but it's the, something that the gun yeah, can do. Yeah, um, I remember you saying, come on. Hot shot. Stun. I think that's it. Automatic fire. Yeah, and, uh, yeah out of He said fire. semi-auto and auto. Yeah, rapid, <clears throat> rapid shot. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. No, it's it's cool, but it's I like... I always like that I, about their guns. Doesn't make sense, but... Uh, yeah, whatever, science, man. Compacted I atom... Yeah, sure. Pin particles. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Um, so they go outside and they call for backup, which is cool. Um, so they go back, they have to go back inside because if they sit there, they're, they're, they're fucked. Yeah. Uh, backup shows up, but they can't get in because they're, they're like, well, we have a technical glitch and whatnot. Because they actually, like, they got to blow through the wall during the chain gun part. Because the chain guns took out a huge chunk. And then he used high explosives. Then he used high explosives to, to blow his yeah, way out. Yeah, and then he's like, hey, look, this gets radio signal out. And then they did that, and then they're like, oh, um, we need backup. And then they call towards the front desk, and they come to the door, and they're like, oh, we're having a... We're having a glitch or something. We're having a glitch. Software glitch or something like that. So, fast. Yeah. So, they're going, they're, they keep going along, and this is, like, it was a really cool scene. Like, this is where you get to see how powerful of a psychic she really is. Like, they drag this dude in the room, and Dredd's beating the shit out of him because he wants information. Because, like, this should have been simple. Like, there's no reason this guy should be that important, right? And then she goes, well, I don't need him to talk. And so they enter this state um, inside of his own mind. And they're talking. Remember that Millennium Key from (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, like, kind of like that. Um, So, let me rephrase this. Earlier in the movie, she does the same thing to the guy, and uh, he's like... He gets inside of her. He's like, gets inside Psych, of her. So you're a psychic man. And she's like, what am I thinking? He's like, he thinks of her, him having sex with her. And he's like, what are you trying to uh, shock me? He's like, if I wanted to shock you, I'd think of this. And you don't get to see what he's. It's essentially it shows her like in a scared state, and yeah, then he just like, like immediately like, fucking elbows her. Yeah, he's like, face. what do you think about now? Anyway, so the scene plays out where he's in. She's inside of his head, and she's uh, the guy says. If it's my fucked up brain versus your fucked up brain, my fucked up brain's gonna win. And it goes through the scene, and she's like, you have no idea. And it goes through this whole scene, You like, can't hurt her Yeah, anymore. cause they're in, it's inside the brain. Yeah. It's all like a dream sequence, almost. And... He makes her suck his dick and Yeah, everything. but then she, like, she reverses it where Mama bites his dick off. Which because is what she did to her... To like her the dad. beginning like of the, the movie. beginning of the movie. Cause, cause fucking... Cause we forget stuff. Because, like, in the beginning, we were like, yep, she bit off the last drug lord's dick. Well, no, no, no. She was a she was a whore in the pleasure dish dick. The pimp sliced her up. So she bit his dick off. Yeah. And took over all the operation. Well, whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Useless plot. Sweet movie. But hilarious thing. Yeah. But anyway, she gets inside of this dude's mind and just fucking mind fucks him. I know how to fuck with you. Gets all of his information. I was like, that was fucking sweet. And you even see the scene where he, like, pisses himself. Yeah, like, like, it pans out and you just see, like, a pool of piss. I was like, that was fucking crazy. Um, so, Mama's like, oh shit, we need to... She's like, what are we gonna do? She's like, call 911. What that means is they call on these four other judges that are... They're dirty judges. You know? And, um... They show up... And, oh, before that, sorry. I don't, uh, I don't care. We're going to fuck <laughs> yeah, around. Yeah. 
They go to this area <laughs> trying to figure out where everyone is at. And the guy, the K, is in the cuffs. And these two teenage kids uh, are like, no, you shoot the judge. You know, they're trying to prove how awesome they are. They got big willies, so they got to fight them. And so they show up. Big penors. Yeah. And they pull their guns on the judge and dr- they go, freeze. Oh, is the fucking best scene. Yeah, freeze. And Judge <laughs> Dredd's like, why? Why, sh- why should I freeze? He's like, otherwise I'm going to shoot you. He's like, how are you going to shoot me with the, with the safety on? The, kid, the kid's like, it's not. And when he does that, Dr- Dredd pulls his gun up. A black man like stra- tries to strangle the other girl. The yep, and then girl. Dra- drags her into the uh, <clears throat> the elevator. At that point, Dread uh, Dread like does a cartwheel and like says stun and shoots both these teenagers with stun rounds. I was like that that's great. Yeah, so it sh- shows that he's not a monster. Yeah. Which I which I brought up. I was like, oh okay. I thought in this like big mega metropolis there would be no difference between minor and adult. Yeah, it's not. I not, just, I just yeah, it's not it. quite as black and white. It's still black and white. Yeah. They still got punished, but it's not like, yep, they die. Well, I mean, actually, we'll probably come back to this when it comes to RoboCop 2. Oh, fair enough. Um, So they go up this level, and, like, uh, Mama's like, we can't, we're just going to kill her. We're going to fill her full of bullets, because you're not, there's not going to be any raping and torturing, blah, blah, blah. And that's when they call 911. You get what's called 911? Um... So these... <laughs> so uh, it's a dramatic scene. They're like, what do we do, Mama? Cut 911. Yeah. And so these dirty judges show up and she's like, how much is they have to run? And she's like, a million credits. She's like, a million? Or it's like, she, the main guy goes, you don't know You don't know who the, the judge is. I do. A million credits. So it's like, okay, that was kind of neat. It's kind of cool. They're like, um, yeah. So, Lieutenant Cannon ain't nothing to fuck with. Yeah. Dread makes it very... Uh, oh, yeah. Before that, sorry. So three judges go after Dread. Yeah. But the reason they called 911 is because Dread was saying, Hey, stay out of my way or you're going to ab- ab- abide to this crime and you will be judged. And But they pinpoint his location. Like, 30 dudes... 20 or 30 dudes go to his location and start firing at his location. Well, he's not there anymore. And that's when he says incendiary and shoots like this. The only, the only code... alert they had was they he tied up a dude in the phone booth that he was using. Yeah. And he went around. And basically these guys uh, shot him up and they're like, he, he's not dead yet. And they, they found out it was a trap. And he says incendiary and this like shoots it, like, the, um, it looks like, like a, a missile. Rocket. Yeah, it's like a rocket. And then breaks up in an impact. And just incinerates all these guys. And they're like, oh, Jesus. So, like, at this point, Dread has killed close to 60, 60 or 70 people. It's like, oh, my God. This guy's, like, fucking murdering. He's just, a a, yeah, he's just slaying through these guys. Holy shit, you know what I forgot? Hmm. I mean, it's a minor scene when the, the fucking uh, rookie kills the fucking dude. is almost, like, fighting oh, for his yeah, life. Yeah, that's... It's, that's it, a point. It, it later comes up, and she's just like, oh, they sneak into, like, a fucking room. Yeah, and the... She uses her fucking mind ability. She's like, I need to read her mind. Stacy, open up the door. She opens it up, and then they just break in, like, ugh. Making her quiet and whatnot, and then she's like, oh. I'm waiting for my husband to come back. Yeah. Turns around, oh, no, it's the guy she shot. Like, yeah. the beginning of like the movie. The, like, over there. Uh, <laughs> like, saying that. It's fun. So... These three, yeah, they send three judges after Dread, and so the first one shows up and like they're sitting from across the room. And he's like, he says like a code sign back. Like, oh, okay, you're we're both judges, and he walks up and he's like, they start talking. And he's like, hey, I noticed you didn't say anything about uh, the other judge that was that we both called it in, and the guy like knows something up, so he goes to call it in, and they get into a fight, and he's like, suck, suck it, uh, Dread, and they start into a fight. And Dread starts getting this dude's ass and then takes his gun and slams it into the dude's throat. Yeah, like open like bends him over like yeah, the just railing. Like, slams it into his throat. I'm like, oh like crush oh. like probably like crush his trachea, like destroyed his abs. No, apple. it's even better because like he the dude the other judge is holding Dread up against the wall and he's just like, Oh, Dread's like, oh and he's like, suck it, Dread. And then he just aims his gun down, oh, yeah, shoots, shoots him the, like three times in the foot. Yeah, like three rounds in the foot. He's like, oh, bends him over the fucking railing, slams the gun in his throat. He's like, oh. Then what, what is his line there? He's like, suck it. No, choke on that. Yeah, choke, like, oh, choke on so, it, Dread. Like that, 
No, he goes. He, Dredd ch- says, "Choke on it." Oh, okay. Because like he's choking on his own blood. It's like that's a really good line, actually. Yeah. And so he falls over. Now it cuts to uh, the psychic lady and Kay talking to her. He's like, "Man, I wanted to do so much more." And he's like, "He's gonna kill her." Well, I forgot to explain this in the other movie, but a judge's weapon is tied directly to their DNA. If a non-judge tries to wield their weapon, in the first movie they just get electrocuted. In this yeah, movie, it, what happens? It, it will incapacitate. Yes, it you. will stop you. K goes to shoot the judge in the head. He's he's like I always wanted one of these. I always so wanted one of these. He's like holding it and it's fine. Yeah. And he goes to shoot the psychic judge in the head, and the gun explodes and just blows his arm off, and he just dies. Like that was awesome. He's like ah. And then so, uh, there was three evil, ju- four evil judges. Three of them were male. One was female. The female one stays. The female one stays. And Mama was like, "Oh, Kay's edge." And the female judge was like, well, I'll go get her. She'll, I'll either see her and kill her, or she'll see me, hesitate, and then I'll kill her. And I was like, <laughs> I even said, I was like, not if that bitch can read your mind. And so she, the psychic uh, one breaks out and kills these two guards and then sees this female judge. And the female judge goes, hey, I'm on your side. You see, like... Uh, the Flash, which is like, you know, they that she's usually, really... they had like a, me- a media kind of like special effects that whenever she has like a mental thing, a white wave just kind of emits from her. Yeah. And she just fucking opens fires on this other judge, the which I is, think is so great. The, the line that's actually done is like, Mama's like, what are you going to do? It's like, I'm going to go take her out. What the fuck? How are you going to do that? Look, she's a rookie, right? So I walk up to her. I, I say, hey, I'm here to help. She hesitate. She hesitates and puts her gun away. I fire. She finds out. She hesitates. I fire and I kill her anyways. Yeah. And, and, then and she, like the scene, she just is... reads her mind and just guns her down with a machine. Hey, gun. I'm here to help. No, hey, I'm on your rookie. Put your gun out. I'm on your side. And then the flash, the insight flash, and then <laughs> dead. I was like, like <laughs> it's, a, it's like a ten second scene. Yeah, just... it's so great. And so. Cut back to Dread uh, being pinned down in this area by the two other judges. The one judge has, like, this sh- crazy shotgun, which is awesome. And they're, like, flanking him, and the, ju- the judge with the shotgun's firing, and Judge goes behind the wall. And Judge is ru- and Dread's running out of ammo. He's like, uh, <sighs> rapid fire. It says, you know, it goes out of ammo. Uh, he says, incendiary, out of ammo. He's out of everything except uh, high explosive. And armor so he, piercing. He drives armor no, piercing. Yeah, he drives armor piercing out ammo. So he, all he has is high X. He's like high X. So he ducks. He ducks around the corner, and the the dude with the shotgun, uh, he like ducks around and shoots this dude in the face with a high explosive round, and his head just oh man, it's liquidy. The gore effects in this fucking movie are rad. Pretty great, dude. Like the fucking three meaty bodies that fall. Yeah, dude, oh. they're fucking rad. It's just... <laughs> Oh, it's gross. They felt like chicken. Yeah. Like wet, raw chicken. So, I think that's good. There's though. one evil judge uh, judge left. And he knows where Dredd is hiding. So he goes, armor pierce, and fires three rounds. The f- first two miss, and then the third one hits home. Pierces through the wall and hits Dredd. Dredd slumps, to, slumps down. The, dr- the judge comes up and was going to shoot him in the head. And J- Dredd goes, wait. The evil judge goes, did you just tell me to wait? They do the great Judge Dread. The great Judge Dread. I expected so much more, but when you're on the other side of the gun, you're just like everyone else. Why should I wait for you to enjoy your last few seconds of life? And then the psychic, then you hear gunfire, and then he slumps to the ground, and the psychic cops behind him. And then Dread just goes, "I was waiting for her to shoot you." I was like, "Oh, that was so good." No, because he kept asking. He's like, "Wait for what? You fucking puny seconds of your life to go away? Wait for you to just die?" And it just gets gunned down. Wait for her to come to shoot you. And <clears throat> so, he has this cool field medical kit, too, which he, like, he does basic field kit surgery. Yeah. He, he, he sprays, like, an anticoagulant in there so he doesn't bleed out anymore. And he's just, like, it's like a row of staples that he just slams in there, and then they cinch down them automatically. I'm like, which oh! looks like it would hurt, like, a oh! motherfucker. It's just fucking rad, like, oh, Jesus, no. So, that scene passes, and they go all the way, they go up and up and up and up. And there's this one guy that I haven't really mentioned the whole scene because he, he does do he he caused the lockdown. He's like the tech specialist dude, who's super terrified of Mama because well she pushed in his eyes. Yeah, she dug <clears> both <throat> of her thumbs into his eyes, and he like she I wouldn't say tortured him, but like 
she definitely enjoys making him uncomfortable. Well, the what? psychic judge. Yeah. She's like, the guy was like, please don't kill me. You know, I'll, I, you don't know how to get to mama. She's Aiding behind. She's, she's behind ten feet of steel, without the password. And she's like, I don't have to talk to you to know, the password. And she reads his mind, reads his mind, and, you know, finds out all this shit and lets him go, which technically she shouldn't have. And Dred's like, why'd you let her go? That's oh, a baiting that, that, felony. That's, that's a that's a baiting felony. That's an automatic fail and a felony. And the second guy goes, I automatically failed after I lost my gun. The dude's a victim. Fuck you. Yeah, he's like, but until this is over, I'm still in charge, so that's my rule. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so they get behind this ten feet of steel, and but before that, you see Mama put this weird thing on her wrist, and you're like, what the fuck is that? Okay, whatever. So they get behind this ten feet of steel, and gun... Uh, the psychic cop, or psychic judge gets shot, and she's down, and Dreads, you know, kills the other guard. They kill all the other guards, and Mama's like, what, you didn't think I had a contingency? What do, what do you think about this jewelry? It's nice, right? Well, it's, uh, I knew I would get caught one day, so I rigged the uh, top 50 floors with high explosives. First if, 50 if, if, go? First 50 go, the rest go. And this device is tied directly to my heartbeat, so you can't shoot me, so put the gun down. She shoots. He Dredge, shoots his fucking Dredge hand. Shoots her in like the ribs or like. Oh, I thought it was her hand. No, like, like, it she was like she was bleeding. It looked like this hand was completely blown off. No, like it looked like she was bleeding. Anyway, it looked like she was bleeding from her side. Okay, I no, think. that's fair like, enough. Whatever. She was holding I, I, the side. Yeah, I could have missed it. Yeah, maybe her hand is missing, and I just missed it. Yeah, and so Dred walks up and he's like, "How far do you think that signal can reach? Two hundred meters. Two hundred meters of concrete." 300 meters because they're on they're on the 100th floor so that's, 200 they're on the 200th floor which is 200 stories so that's 2,000 feet of concrete so what he does is he slams her against the wall and he injects her he forces her to take the slow-mo and then just pushes her out the window and she falls and just splatters against the ground and that doesn't. That obviously the bomb doesn't go off. Cause it's out of range. Yeah, out like of range. holy shit, that was a hell that was of a game. ballsy move. And so, they come come back. They go back to the bottom. Everything's you know it's resolving because she's dead. The he last, says I am the law only he, once. Yeah, he says I'm, I'm the law only once. I was like, Aww. I'm happy about that. I'm the law. Um. <laughs> so, uh. Everything's getting resolved, and the in the very beginning, the girl who's who gave this the psychic cop another shot goes like up. really rushed to do this. I love it. Yeah, well, this is I know a lot about it because yeah. it's fresh. Um, fresh goes. Oh, did she pass or did she fail? And he goes, she passed. Like it's a really long wait because like she's like I already know I failed. Yeah, hands are fucking bad. She's like I'm, I don't want to fucking be a part of this anyway. I'm fucking care. Not 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 quite. <laughs> Not, not quite. Pretty, pretty much. But yeah. when she goes seeks medical aid, she's like, did she pass or fail? And she's like, oh yeah, she passed. I was like, nice. Like, I guess that's supposed to be Judge... I would assume that that's most of Judge Dread comics. Yeah. Just kind of stuff like that. She's like, well, he's obviously going to say that she fails because she failed. Yeah. He's like, no, she passed. Like, she's got a heart. Oh, okay, that's cool. She got a heart of gold. So what was your what was your favorite what was your favorite scene in the movie? Oh, dude, the fucking... <laughs> uh... I th- oh man, I like the fucking I like the grenade a lot, but I don't think that's like my favorite fucking scene. Which grenade? The fucking grenade they roll into. Oh, the, the stun grenade. Okay. The, yeah, the stun grenade. They're like, oh, fucking like where they take out those bodies. But like, the gasp scene's pretty cool. What was your favorite though? Favorite? I don't know if I want to say the mind fuck one because that feels really cheap. Because it's it's a really cool fucking scene. But holy god, do I like how we just fucking no ball, all balls, no fucking chill, blows the fuck out of Mama and then goes, You're fucking gonna fall, bye. <laughs> My favorite scene, hands down in this movie, is, which I haven't talked, the reason I specifically haven't talked about it is because I want to talk about it now. Oh yeah. It was near the beginning of the movie. There's a car chase, and this is basically how you're introduced. There's a car chase, these guys take out an innocent by hitting with their, with their van. Oh <laughs> So, <laughs> Dread takes out the van, whatever. <coughs> this guy takes a girl hostage and is, you know, has her a gunpoint. That's point. a good scene, yeah. And Dread's like, I'll make you, you have one chance, I'll make you, I'll make you a deal. Life, life without parole in the ISO cubes. 
And the guy's like, that's not much of a deal. And the thing is, you don't have any fucking leverage. And he's, because he has his gun against this girl's head. I'll blow her fucking brains yeah, out. Yeah, I'll blow her brains out. And he's like, that, that's your only chance. So what do you say, hot shot? And hot shot is one of the rounds, right? And so... No, no, he said, he's, he actually states the other option. It's just like, and this is me negotiating. Yeah, this is me negotiating. Otherwise, otherwise, the sentence is, is death. Is death. What do you say, hot shot? And, and the guy goes, "What did you say to me?" And he goes, "I said, hot shot." And fires and this the, this basically a flare into this dude's fucking head, and it fucking melts. Yeah, the his dude brain. like falls to his knees, and his head just catches on fire, and then his head melts. It's like, oh my fucking god. Like, it just sets the tone for the whole movie. Like, you're like, this is about to get real fucking rough, guys. Strap like, yeah. in. This is fucking rad, dude. Like, oh, dude. Fucking dread so goddamn rad. Like, that is by far my favorite movie. Yeah? Oh, or, dude. sorry, my, my favorite scene of that movie. Dude, that fucking... Oh, dude. It's a lot of... Even the dude, they just kind of wail on. Like, they have no fucking dude. The dude's walking out. In the middle of the street, and they just fucking clip him with the side. Yeah, they clip him with this fucking with their van, and you just you hear the wet splatter of his head against the the. It's so the fucking. Windshield. You're just like fuck. It seems so realistically ragdoll that I'm like, holy balls! Dread just kind of maneuvers around. It's like killing innocents. He's like he's, they kill God innocents. I'm taking, I'm taking him down. Like to put it in the terms that the young kids like this. This movie has no chill. Which one? <laughs> Which one, which one, okay, for the most Christopher Nolan Batman, do you think Carl Urban did it better? Or the, the, the like, the, the most guttural fucking noise dread, which is, like, pretty much everyone who read the comic probably assumed that he did. Which do you think is more Christopher Nolan Batman? Stallone or Carl Urban? Carl Urban by far. Because <laughs> there's some scenes where he's definitely very guttural, which is, it's, in the scenes he does very guttural, they're very impactful. I think I think what's weird is that like, which do you think has the better judge, dread face? Oh, by far, dread. Really? Yeah, cause like, just because he takes off, Stallone takes off his Stallone helmet. takes off the helmet. Never once does Urban take off his helmet, which, which is which good. means which yes, which is good because that means you focus on the dread face. You focus on the action movie rather than making a dumb romance movie with one of the other. Yeah, and like I said, you you can see like. He conveys a lot of emotion through but just Stallone fucking, like... Has, Stallone has the permanent fucking frown. <clears throat> yeah. Stupid. It's fucking weird how much, like... Like, the thing is, is that, like, it's obvious Dread is more like... Dread, the movie, makes Carl Urban Dread be tactical fucking person. Mm-hmm. Whereas Stallone Dread makes him more like a police officer, because he's, like, always at attention. Yeah. Like, if you've, if you've seen it, like, the belt that he wears is more like a fucking fitness belt. Yeah. And he's, like, always at attention, chest out, fucking nuts out, and he's like, hmm. And he's, yeah. like, always flexing his fucking muscles. It's the most weird yeah, fucking thing. Yeah, it's super thing. weird. So, so, in the movies we've watched so far... How how do you rate what we've watched so far? I think I think Dread kind of hits that top ranking number, if only because like it's it's probably the best executed in just like the executions. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, you can go with one liners. I mean, keeping that in consideration, Dread had one liners. Stallone's Dread had more better one liners. Mm-hmm. But of course, 007, Pierce Brosnan era is like the best at one liners. Like, out of the four movies we did, fucking, the one-liners in fucking Dutt World's Not Enough is way better. Well, absolutely. It's a, it's a Bond movie. Their one-liners are amazing. I don't know, because from what I hear, Daniel Craig isn't that much. He I don't know any of his movies, so. Yeah. But, like... So, what, are, what, are you, what is your rating so far? Okay. So, Dread... Okay, we'll do this to break this down. Dread first, because fucking good shit. The second movie uh, we go ranking-wise is, I think... I want to say fucking, um, the world is not enough because like, I don't know, Mortal Kombat, even though it's just a dumb, it's not like a big dumb action movie. It's got fights, but they feel so like weightless. I don't know. It's a really hard way to explain that. It's just like, let's take it into his fact, the transporter, but maybe that's just comparing better cinematography. And it's just, just like, we didn't do that at the time. Yeah. 
We honestly wanted to know what was going on. Okay. But I think, like, the fucking fun action scenes, I think it's going to be World is on enough second place because dumb fucking snowmobiles is fucking hilarious. Yeah. You heard me laugh way too fucking yeah. much during that movie. It was very genuine. And, like, I was just laughing, like, this is the dumbest fucking movie because it was one of my favorite ones. One of. And, like, I remember it being so, I was like, man, this is a pretty good Bond movie. And now watching it now, I'm like, man, this is the dumbest fucking Bond movie ever. And I think that plates it for second, is that, like, it's so dumb, but there's so much more action happening. So what's after that, then? Then we got, I'm going to say Mortal Kombat, and then fucking um, Stallone Dread, or Judge Dread. Because, like, Mortal Kombat, even though it kind of, like, felt kind of weightless, I guess, in those fights, I don't... That's a really weird way to say it, because, like, the Scorpion fight is honestly pretty good. Some of the fights are really good. But, like, the fights don't seem explosively impactful. Yeah. Like, even the Liu Kang Shang Tsung fight was like, Oh, roundhouse kick. Poof, you're on spikes. Yay! Yeah. The reptile fight was dumb. Yeah. Like, I guess it's just the fighting style is just like, back then when they did fighting movies, Jackie Chan was the penultimate. Jet Li was fucking great. Yeah, fucking Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was rad. And one more? Four mm-hmm. four Asian action movie stars? I don't remember. But, like, they're fucking rad as shit. And I goddamn love them. And I think that actually, I like the fan to hand combat more than all the action scenes that were in fucking. Stallone Judge Dredd and it's not like because Judge Dredd is a bad movie I mean pure rating it purely on <coughs> an action movie stance holy shit Judge Dredd would probably be higher but it's like comparatively I think that I had more fun with fucking Mortal Kombat fair enough than fucking Stallone yeah. Dredd I'm I'm definitely on base I have that basic same ranking system I think Judge Dredd or Dredd is the top it's just so good. Well, yeah. I have the bias towards that because, oh, it's so... I like that movie so much. Definitely The World Is Not Enough was second for me. Really? It's, yeah. The World Is Not Enough was just a good movie. It was it was nice and actiony. It had its definitely comedic relief options, which, okay. which was nice. <laughs> it's just dumb fucking plot. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> Mortal Kombat is third. Um... Because it, it was nice. It was just a dumb kung fu movie, basically. Yeah, it's fun. Its plot was almost non-existent it was it, the plot was just like okay we're fighting this tournament to save earth okay there you go wacky johnny cage perfect, perfect. <laughs> the reason i put uh judge dread at the very bottom is because i i don't think it was well shot it I, was just a it was a dumb movie the plot was kind of muddy i think like the here's the thing though what i believe if i were to actually base this on plot and more critical analysis i would actually put stallone dread higher than the world is not enough Mm, I disagree. I would say that only for the reason that, like, it felt like they really worked towards something. Mm, fair enough. Whereas the world was not enough. Was just like, um, yeah, she's gonna crash the submarine into the base. Why, why did you do this? Gotcha. It, it just it felt dumb. It felt boring, and it felt stupid. I don't. I don't know. It's, it's a really dumb way of explaining it, but I'm just like. Uh, I don't know, like, I felt like there was much more potential that was lost in the Stallone Dread. Yeah, I gotcha. Whereas, the fucking world is not enough, it's just dumb. Mm Mm-hmm. It's dumb. It's just like, oh, this is just stupid. And, like, there's not really a potential lost because a Bond movie, you're like, uh, you know, I think they pushed it to its limits. You could recorrect story all you want because that's what a Bond movie is. It's mostly story. They have action movie quips, action quips, and everything. And of course, Pierce Brosnan fucks everything in sight. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Like, I think in a critical analysis, I would honestly place like Stallone higher because even though it's dumb, I still like Mortal Kombat's comedic part. Like, because it's supposed to be action comedy. Mm-hmm. I laughed at that more, genuinely, because it's like, well, Johnny Cage were like, yep, that's wacky. But, like, Rob Schneider being wacky and fucking Stallone yeah. was just dumb. And I'm like, oh, God. I, I just think the cinematography for Judge Dredd was just bad. I thought it was poor sh- poorly shot. The A lot of the dialogue was just like, what the 
fuck? It was trying to be something, obviously, that it wasn't, but it was trying to be heavily influenced by Terminator, big dumb action movies yeah. that were, like, really, really But I still think like, The World Is Not Enough, though, was still perfectly within its own means, you know what I mean? Where, like, uh, Judge Dredd was trying to do too much. Like, it was trying to be like, wow, look at all these, like, you know, I, look, well, we got one line, we also got action, but it didn't do anything, to, it didn't do any of them very well. Whereas The World of Not Enough, at least, was like, okay, what was your thing? Okay, we have some action. Cool. The action points they did were, were well done. It's the just di- a dumb plot. Yeah, the dialogue was not bad. Like, it had some definite moments where it was like, oh my god. It was like, the one line was really on yeah, point. But it's like, yes, the... The plot was just stupid, but overall, I think it's just a better movie. You know, honestly, I think I'd agree with you now. Yeah, no, that's a well-explained point. I don't know, it's kind of hard to argue this, because we're clearly watching really bad movies. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and it's hard to be like, yep, critical. But this is more just like having fun, because like, they're dumb bro force movies. They're yeah. big, dumb action movies. But no, I agree. Then, yeah, making your point, that's a fair, fair point. Um... Then yeah, so your your list is pretty much the same. Yep. Literally, you'd put Mortal Kombat over Stallone. Yes. Okay. What did you actually like out of Stallone then? I Just, mean, it's, you saw it's, it's, most, but bad. it's mostly a nostalgia for me because I I saw the movie when I was really younger. You know, it came out in '95. I was three at that point, so like it, I saw it when it was on TV. You know, when I was like seven or eight for the first time. Okay. And then so like it's just a lot of nostalgia for me. That's why I liked it. But is there really, honestly, nothing that like, you take away from it? It was, I don't know. It, it didn't really do that much for me. Like, I feel like there should be something you take away from because some of the action scenes, I was like, oh, okay. No, like some of the action the scenes, robot's were, dumb. Like the robot was dumb the, because that only made Rob Schneider viable. Yeah, that was the only thing. Like the combat scenes themselves were kind of cool. Like when they actually got to do actual gunplay, like the hand-to-hand combat scenes were, was stupid. I really honestly like the fact that there was framing. Yeah. I like the setup of the potential. Yeah. Like I said, I love the potential of Judge Dredd. Yeah, it could have been a much better movie. Because, like, like I think it was like a midway through the movie, they just decided to fart on everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> fuck you. And they're like... Bleh, bleh. It's just a dumb fucking thing that had lots of potential, but they were like, nah, fuck that. Like, literally take out the robot, take out Rob Schneider, yeah. maybe keep in Hershey. The courtroom scene, I honestly don't mind, because that was honestly short, succinct, and fucking great, because it obviously yeah. shows something other than big, dumb action movie. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like it. I like it for that very reason, is that I like the potential that they did, but I like that fucking Dread decided to cut the bullshit and go commando style and just go, here's a straight linear plot, go. Yeah. Which we'll talk about, I guess. Because that's one of my favorites. But. So. I mean, like. I think we've talked about everything. We've talked about everything. But, like, I think we're just not going to have an order on how we watch these movies. Because, obviously, we would watch the Mortal Kombat 2. No, absolutely. We're just going to start, you know, watching them and filming them as they are. Maybe try to put them in some sort of. It won't even be a. Some sort of maybe playlist or something like that. I don't know. Well, we'll do something. This will obviously be highly edited. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking the thing is, is with, with this, we're gonna be watching them, and it's like, oh, okay, Randy, uh, you want to come over to my house at like ten? We'll watch the movies. Or if you make it over here at five, we'll watch like four movies and be like, yeah, wow, movies. it's pretty tired. <clears throat> we're recording right now. But also, I think if you want, we'll put a a a link or not link but like uh, all the movies that we're going to be watching in the description if you want just mm-hmm. to like and hey, we'll mark you, them off yeah if you want to watch them you know see which ones we're watching that'll be good yeah we're gonna this is kind of like a one run kind of thing is that we're honestly we're gonna do this we're gonna fucking run through these movies and once we're done I don't know let's pr- consider the project dead we're not gonna keep it yeah. going and if you you know if we get a lot of views or if, you know something like that and you want to see something else we'll, we'll start we'll, a second we'll think, series yeah we'll think about it but for now, this is uh, this is Horsecock signing off. Is that really a Horsecock? It's Horse- Horsecock. I thought it was Thunder Smash. Nah, Horsecock. It's gonna be Horsecock now. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Noah or Dernanaga or whatever the fuck you want to say. Some piece of shit. Bye. I'm fat. I'm good.
I hope you enjoyed that uh, at least a little bit. I have very strong feelings about not really wanting to release it, but I thought in the spirit of being fair, I thought I might release projects that I've been holding out on and trying not to edit for. This got corrupted at first, and well, uh, I found some uncorrupted portions and uncorrupted files of it, so as far as that goes, uh, quite a lifesaver. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy, have a good day, and uh, less archival footage uh, content coming out, but still archival footage coming out every once in a while. I just hope you can enjoy it while you can. Bye.